and of course here right yeah. I think it's okay do you so do you see nicely from there okay it's good okay great so let's uh, let's start uh, another lecture we'll make as Osvaldo's suggestion uh, two breaks today so that uh, we make it less tiring for them for not only for you also for me uh, but let's just uh, quickly recap uh, what was the discussion um, during the previous lecture the last things that we were talking about so uh, we have um, the, the, one of the key points that we have discussed uh, of the last lecture was regarding uh, weak interactions, uh, electromagnetic interactions, and uh, um, uh, well, and in particular for the weak case, we have the, the, the charged currents and the neutral current ones. So the neutral one, the neutral current ones go hand in hand with the electromagnetic currents in a way, but well, that's going that's more a spoiler for today's <laughs> lecture. In fact, in the context of the previous lecture, we understood that um, the weak currents, either the, uh, the charged or the, the neutral, they distinguish left and right chiralities of the fermions. So in fact, while the electromagnetic current is agnostic, so it's completely democratic towards the, the, the um, what is the rising? Okay. <laughs> Great. Marcia, you can sit. Just like me, I need to hear some. I can take this here, and you have a nice view in front of you there. I think also you know, people online might be happy. What did you miss? No, 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 we are just about to start because we had some problems in connecting things. Right, as well, as well. This, but here you can just take it. This is a whole, yeah, this is, this is quite big. When someone arrives. Uh, we should close the door for now. Let's keep it open. Yeah, to keep the air. So this is standard model one. Two. Two. This is uh, standard model one. Uh, is ended already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> next no, 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 no. This is not extra. This is there was one extra class of standard model one, and this one. Uh, so we we only have five slots for two, and this is to oh. to make uh, to make it for the the, the six. We don't need more in this uh, okay. in this uh, lecture, actually. So I was saying that the, the electromagnetic currents um, they they don't distinguish between the left and the right part, and they are vector type uh, because it's only this this uh, mu this uh, this gamma mu that takes place in the definition of the electromagnetic current density. Uh, but it's not the same when you talk about the weak currents, uh, the charge and the neutral ones, which are for the case of neutral ones, it sees the, the, the left-handed part as a vector minus axial vector uh, current because of the gamma five. Uh, and this, this has to do with the, the catalytic projector, uh, one min, minus gamma five part to project out the left-handed parts. And the, the, um, the right-handed part is a V plus a, a, or in other words, a vector plus uh, axial vector current. For the case of the 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 the, char the, new, uh, the charged currents, the the ones coupling to W one plus uh, W plus minus, uh, it's only it, it's uh, it's vector plus uh, axial current. And there is one place where we can see it more clearly, but it only couples to sorry vector minus axial. It only here it, it goes. It only couples to the left-handed uh, part of the fermion. So it is in the sense that the the, the neutral the weak currents. Distinguish between left and right parts. So we can say that uh, the weak interaction uh, has parity by left. Yes, okay. exactly, and that is a, a known thing. Uh, but uh, in fact, um, what happens uh, is that uh, if I give you a model, and say, look, uh, look, this extension to the standard model, it can maybe it can happen in an exercise. I will think if it can be simple. This can also be a way of you to learn a bit, a bit of new physics. 
DSM through exercises, but concrete things. Um, well, let's see, I need to see how realistic is that to be done. Maybe it is, but in 10 minutes, I don't think it's complicated. But if I give you uh, a model, look, you have this extra family, but let's see if it's a normal family. Uh, and then you compute the, 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 the weak currents, and then you realize that the left and the right parts, they have the same mass. Uh, they, they are equal. So, okay, this is not a chiral fermion because there is no, dis no distinction between left and right. Uh, the coupling to the left and right parts is the same. So that would uh, that uh, that is the definition of a vector-like uh, fermion. I I said this in the previous lecture and I'm repeating it now. Right now, let's we discussed a lot about uh, leptons so far. Let's discuss about quarks and let's go to a more generic uh, um, framework compared to what uh, was our discussion so far. So quarks, um, these are the kinetic terms for quarks. Uh, this is just repeating what uh, we have for, uh, for leptons. So we have the SU2 doublet quarks here, this part. So this QLR have the up and uh, down left uh, chiralities parts. So up and down, both left. And then you have the right ones here, the down, and the uh, up uh, quarks. Here uh, I'm doing, I'm starting with a simplified, uh, simplified scenario where this kappa family is contracting here. So this is, I'm assuming to start that this is family universal or family diagonal or flavor diagonal, if you prefer. It can also be said in that way for our first analysis. So one of the exercises that I will ask you to do uh, is to uh, expand these kinetic terms and arrive at this Lagrangian that is here, where you identify the, uh, uh, the, the, the currents, basically. So here, the weak end. Then I, I will define a little bit more better uh, if I want to write this in terms of uh, the G couplings or the E couplings, or if I want to put some family non universality based on what we are going to discuss today, of course. But this will be left an exercise to show that uh, this is uh, uh, the form of the currents. And what I really find, at least this is my, my opinion, that's why I like these things. Of course, that's why I decided to work on particle physics, not only because of this. Uh, I like What I like is BSM. But um, this is one of the things that I find is quite pretty. So you just expand the covariance derivative and you look at the electromagnetic currents and you bang, you have here the ch electric charges of the of the down and the up quarks. Note here that I am already compressing, let's say, the, the chirality um, part. So I have, it, this is already the, the physical down quarks here and the physical up quarks here. So it's uh, this expansion was done uh, above it. So you put the complex conjugation and you form Dirac mass terms. In this case, it's not a mass term, but you can form Dirac fermions out of the, uh, when you expand with the complex conjugation. Note that there is no plus uh, emission conjugation here because it's already implicit in, uh, in this Dirac, uh, Dirac fermions, both the Ds and the, and the Us. But yeah, but you have here the charges that you that uh, you would see in all tables you see, that you see in this book in the in the PDG, and for you that <laughs> are here. Um, these are the charges, and it, this is quite pretty. Um, also, we have um, for the weak curve, They, they look the same. Uh, and this is only a left projector, projector that you are here. The, this two is coming from the, the definition of the, the catalytic projector. And so there is nothing special to say. You just say that they, they uh, have the, look the same. And here, uh, this is um, a for the, 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 the Z, so the, the neutral currents. Uh, and look that I have done something here compared to what was uh, before. Here, this is a more standard way of writing it. There's also another way of writing it, is that instead of having this, uh, this uh, explicit terms here, uh, you can write like GV minus GA, and then this GV and GA I think, uh, can be identified in terms of the, 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 the generators of the, the symmetry, and you extract these uh, things. But uh, in this case, uh, at least uh, I like more to see uh, written in this because I can explicitly see a few details. For example, for up quarks, you see the minus two thirds here, which is like, 
you see analogous to the, the electric charge. This is not electric charge, but it's related it, in terms of quantum numbers. These things are related. The same generators contribute to this to this uh, to this uh, interaction here. Um, and and you have for the down quark, so you can you can see here this uh, this type of uh, symmetric behavior. Look, this is the the, the right uh, projection, uh, right here, and the left projector here. So you will see once again explicitly here that uh, the right and left parts are seen differently in the couplings to the to the Z bosons. Note that I uh, have done a choice here, which is the electromagnetic current is written in terms of this E. The, you have a charge, but I have decided to bring back the gauge coupling uh, for uh, for the, the the weak currents, and this decision is based on the fact that in the literature you see the the weak currents written in this way several times. Otherwise, if you go to the previous lecture, you see that uh, you have cosines and sines here, uh, and this is a little bit more compact uh, writing in this way. This is only a. a, a a way of expressing parameters, and uh, there is neither wrong, and they are all correct. It, we just have to be consistent when we do calculations, of course. So uh, we can just take the same conclusions uh, that apply to the left home sector that we discussed in the previous lecture. Um, and yeah, this is what uh, I've just said, the tabulated uh, electric charges that we immediately uh, obtain out of the box here. Right, so let's now uh, add some more fun to the game. Let's start adding. So actually, the, today lecture is going to be in flavor physics. If uh, maybe I will put in YouTube flavor physics or introduction to flavor physics in the in the in today's lecture, uh, the title for today's lecture, because uh, we are going to see one of the. Uh, and Oswaldo was uh, say, saying the previous lecture, oh, this is uh, weird in a, in a constructive way, but this is weird having three generations. And then I was saying, yeah, but uh, three generations and why the difference in mass? But the problem, something that's called the flavor problem, it's not ending there. You will realize today that uh, we have, you know, the flavor problem is a lot deeper. And uh, the, my, the key today is to discuss, uh, to understand step by step what is the flavor problem in the in the standard model so to start discussing this uh, the first goal is to look into the, the 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 quark sector the flavor mixing and we will derive we will understand what is the ck uh, matrix which stands for kabibo kobayashi and maskawa but first let's let's try to un to understand uh, a few things about bases uh, and we need to distinguish between two different bases here. First of all, uh, we denote a particle is one which has a well-defined mass. And how can we see this? For example, the mass is the, the, the main identity of a particle. Of course, it has other quantum numbers. It has spin, and that's very important. It has uh, electric charge. It has, um, it has uh, uh, weak charges and so on. Uh, but uh, if you if you remove mass, uh, then you get. Uh, if you if you forget about mass, then you start having a lot of degeneracy within particles. There's a lot of them would spin one off. A lot of them have positive electric charge or negative electric charge, even not integer electric charges. So, the, but the mass distinguishes is the identity of the of a particle is conferred by uh, its mass. But and the mass is not sufficient. The mass is not sufficient so to the. You well, can say do we have this kind of particle? The thing is, uh, if we have a mass, we, can, we a mass doesn't tell us if it's a fermion or if it's a scalar or or if it's a, a vector. Surely it doesn't. But um, but we the thing is, we know uh, those knowing those properties, the mass uh, is like the final step in the identity of a particle, and uh, and it's uh, the, the mass. The, this identity of the particle, and this is why we work in a mass diagonal basis, uh, uh, does not change in propagation. The propagation of a particle is very well defined in the mass basis, because a particle at point A is the same particle at point B. If you allow, if you change the propagation properties, so if you allow an, a mass non-diagonal basis, then things become a lot more complicated. Surely, physics is basis invariant. 
but the, the uh, conceptual understanding would be extremely challenging. It, I, I also have some difficulty thinking about this. This is a, <laughs> a easy uh, visualizable thing, but if a particle changes from uh, one identity to another within a, a propagation, of course, then we have to have something else that is diagonal. Uh, and we'll give some examples here. But uh, uh, then we no longer have a well-defined propagator and the particles no longer, the definition of particle uh, will no longer hold. A particle uh, should keep it, its identity uh, when it's pro uh, uh, um, uh, beyond propagation, let's say. But uh, if they, they oscillate, exactly. Exactly, they, they, that's it. But it's a, it's a superposition. That's a, that's a yeah. superposition. In fact, it's still uh, it's still a superposition of mass uh, yeah, of uh, mass eigenstates, exactly. And you need you need the mass eigenstates there too yeah. for that. Um, but the propagation of the, the mass eigenstate, uh, so it's it's well defined. But then there is a phase that can map you from uh, one uh, one flavor to another. Let's say it's a, let's say it was one definite mass, but this mass is a, a mixture of flavors. It's more, it's more like that. If you fix mm -hmm. on the mass, the mass, let's say, doesn't change, but the, there is an, uh, a different uh, difference in the in the flavors, and the way those flavors will interact with the electrons, muons, or tau will so it will depend on on the probability of at a certain point in space, uh, uh, certain flavor because it depends on time. This phase depends on time, um, and at certain point in space, it will be more muon or more electron, and it will affect uh, experiments. So, in other words, we are choosing uh, the mass to be diagonal. The mass basis, let's say, this is what we are going to talk, mass basis. But, um, uh, and in this basis, interactions come in the form of linear combinations in this sense. Let, let me explain what is this. So suppose, so you have, you have here a certain particle, a certain field, let's just assume this is a scalar, uh, just to simplify our lives, let's put it real. Uh, to, to make our life simpler. Um, you have a certain scalar with a certain mass, but you have I and J here that are different. So once again, this is not in a mass basis, so you, we need to fix this in order to have a propagator that is well-defined. So you can rotate it to a mass basis, which is of, uh, of this form, because we, when we measure these elements in, a, in, a, in experiments, uh, and uh, this implies doing this, you can rotate, you can rotate the fields in this way, so the, the to the, the 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 ones that diagonalize the mass basis, knowing that this rotation is orthogonal, uh, and uh, you, you basically get um, you get, for example, if you go. So this is just to show the, the rotation. We work a lot with these rotations uh, now today, but you understand you are plugging here this these rules uh, here in order to show that in fact you you go back to the original one. Um, and when we choose to work in the in the mass basis, we also need to rotate uh, uh, all other couplings of uh, the theory to the same basis, so that uh, when we do a measurement in the mass basis, we do a measurement of everything in the mass basis. So here, for example, imagine we have a, a cubic interaction. Imagine this is one of the one of the models of this uh, the Z three model that you had in the in the the, the exercise uh, um, in, the, in the in the in the homework exercise. That Jean also did last year, actually. <laughs> the first, do you remember that the potential, generic potential that you have to put the Zs and, and so on? So uh, imagine that you had a Z3 model that you could only have like uh, this type of uh, interactions. Then you have to rotate it to the to the to the mass basis. And to do that, you just apply the rotations here to the to the to the fields as defined here above. Um, and uh, you get this transformation property. So you get in the mass basis and you get a redefinition of the coupling that you can just uh, define in this way. So this lambda ABC is in fact this, this lambda IJK uh, with the rotation matrices uh, acting on it. And this is a linear combination in the sense that now you expand this, uh, these uh, vertices. So you have like, um, like many possibilities. So a linear combination uh, that is respected to this. While the, in the mass basis, no, it's it's always uh, it's diagonal and period. Here it's um, it's how you what you should measure. Then you, you choose which field 
uh, you want to measure and you have a associated coupling to this, of course. Um, Just to be sure, that lambda is not related to Lawrence transformation, right? Here, no, 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 it's not, it's not Lawrence. Okay, this is, okay. this. Uh, yeah, for those that are not used to the notation, this big lambda doesn't have anything to do with Lawrence. It's a scalar uh, cubic coupling. It's just uh, typically uh, you can call it when you call lambda uh, phi to the three or phi to the four theory and so on, which is this case, you always put lambdas, uh, cu lambda couplings like this, but now I'm assuming two different bases. So I'm giving different names. A big lambda for the, 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 the gauge basis or the flavor basis, let's call the flavor basis or the interaction basis, and a small lambda to the mass basis. Right, um, but let's let's uh, complicate things a little bit. Uh, our life uh, <laughs> a little bit. Imagine that we were crazy and say, okay, I want to think of experiments that measure things in the interaction basis only. So let's diagonalize the interaction, the cubic interaction, and not the masses. To be fair, I have difficulties in uh, visualizing this. Uh, what can be an experiment that uh, works like this? Uh, maybe I'm. To bias to the mass basis, but I cannot see how could it uh, happen. Uh, but let's just uh, imagine for a moment. Um, so we would have to write, uh, now I'm putting it here, lambda tilde, and I'm no longer calling it neither uh, big phi nor this uh, var phi, I'm calling f here because it's another basis, so we should call a different name. And this is the uh, this is diagonal. We only have terms that are, ah, Oswald, you. You don't speak. So you have you have you have a term that looks like this. Okay, let's apply the rotations. Those were well defined here, and uh, we uh, go back to the um, we go back to this. Uh, now we, we recover this uh, this basis here. Uh, then the masses would become. So now let's apply this this uh, to the masses. So you have the, the, the generically non-diagonal mass, but now let's rotate to the basis that diagonalize the cubic interaction. And we get, again, another mass, which I'm now I'm identifying with alpha and beta here. That is not necessarily diagonal. This, this alpha does not have to be equal to beta. So we rotate to, uh, this is just to highlight the fact that uh, if we choose to diagonalize uh, a vertex to be, uh, uh, to be, uh, that much to be diagonal, the mass will not be diagonal. But once again, here we have the problem that uh, um, that we don't have the propagator well defined if we choose this basis. So particles would come in linear combination of interaction eigenstates, in fact. So these Fs are interaction eigenstates, let's call this, and not mass eigenstates. And typically we talk about mass eigenstates. Of course, uh, uh, from the theoretical perspective, it's completely different. But uh, same, some problems related to flavor physics, it may be convenient to work in the interaction uh, in the interaction uh, uh, basis, at least to simplify some calculations. Of course, let's add some water. Um, but. Uh, but of course, uh, we are not crazy enough, and we will prefer the the, the, the mass basis. Right. So, of course, so one of the conclusions that we think from here is that both the interaction and the mass basis are related to one another. Um, but this is this is this is a bit what uh, was discussed. Um, things in the mass basis, and this is what I've said. Just the the, the way they find propagators such that uh, the mass. Um, of course, the identity of a particle, uh, well, I said it does not change the non-propagation, but this is considering like really a pure propagation of the particle. If it, uh, it, if it meets other particles in a vertex, of course, it can change identity because there is an interaction taking place. Uh, and that, that's a different story. 
Also speaking of vertices, so we have this uh, discussion about the Ws last in the previous lecture. But if you have, for example, a charged particle, which could be a W traveling, it could radiate a, a, a photon. Uh, but that, that is a physical photon. Uh, in the other case, it's a virtual photon. In a, but in that case, it's because it's only going in one direction, the momentum is already in that direction. So, um, well, shouldn't it radiate only when it's accelerating? They're accelerating, of course. Of course. Of course. I don't know how you accelerate the very rotation. Well, it's, uh, it may, well, let's say, if it, in a, in a yeah, yeah. so, yeah, if it, if it uh, when it's moving in a, exactly. But, but, but it, it is also independent, right? Because uh, yes, 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 it depends on the frame. Uh, if you are in the last frame or if you are in the, the center of mass frame, yes. So which, has, which is also a problem in classical electric dynamics because mm -hmm. in the frame of the electron is still falling. So mm -hmm. it's really... Yes. Anyway, but that's that's a, an interesting uh, another discussion which is also interesting. But let's focus on uh, on flavor physics today. So uh, this is what I said that the mass uh, a certain particle, if I define as a state, let's say it can uh, uh, it's crucial to have this uh, identity. Uh, so that we know what is a particle. Uh, we really need to know its mass. In fact, uh, the most paradigmatic example is the case of, uh, of leptons. Where you really identify what distinguish the, the electron mu and tau from one another is, is its mass. Everything else is equal in them. There is no, no, no difference. What distinguishes the three neutrinos, in principle, it's their, uh, it's their mass, although we cannot resolve it. But we know the differences between their masses. So we also know that, that there are three different uh, um, three different uh, uh, neutrinos because of the two mass differences that we know we know different the, the, the difference between the masses of two of them one can actually be massless uh, but the other two cannot be and we know we know the differences of uh, between the masses um so let's just keep working on um on the um, on the mass basis bearing in mind that the mapping between uh, the mass basis and the interaction basis, which we'll call a lot flavor basis, uh, can have uh, physical consequences, such as flavor mixing, as we will discuss. Right, so now let's uh, fix our notation for the, the next uh, the discussions that, uh, that will follow. Um, we will uh, work, uh, so in the weak or interaction basis, we will use primes. And here we start with with quarks here. Uh, when we rotate to the physical or mass basis, we will use um, unprimed fields, as you as you see here. Here, um, the general J in this in, I will use most of the times unless otherwise stated. Uh, um, J one two three. So I and J will stand for uh, for a weak basis or flavor basis uh, indices, and the A and B will stand for uh, for uh, mass basis indices. So let's relook at uh, the the Yukawa uh, our Yukawa poten uh, not potential the, the Yukawa Lagrangian and uh, look at it uh, in a generic non diagonal uh, scenario. And this is, we are going to do this for the quarks. So this is how the, the Yukawa potential looks like. This gun, this is actually the notation. <laughs> this is actually the notation that is typically uh, used. So for the down, uh, for the down type quarks, people typically use this uh, gamma matrices. And for uh, uh, up type quarks, uh, delta matrices. These are Yukawa, Yukawa matrices. So we are no longer talking about uh, uh, Yukawa coupling as a number. We are talking about a, um, a set of numbers, or in this case, a matrix. Of course, if you have more Higgs doublets, uh, if you have a model with uh, two Higgs doublets, three Higgs doublets, and so on, you would have to put an index A uh, here, which would be, for example, in two doublet models, A would be one and two. And this Yukawa matrices would also have this uh, a index here, but of course I'm going to remove this a from here because we are not uh, not working in a multi-higgs uh, model. This is just a standard model to to 
introduce the concept. When you go to, to uh, higher X multiplicities, of course, it's the exact same concepts, but a little bit less. guys are you there yes yeah okay because it crashed here um, somehow the internet uh, crashed i have a question mark in <laughs> i have a question mark in my network i don't know let's see let's try let's try to keep this working uh, uh, i don't know if it's only for me but there's been a couple times where uh the connection has not been very good. Oh, well, yes. I don't know if the problem is my internet or if it's the same for everyone. It... No, no, I had the same. Okay. You have the same, yeah. So maybe... Professor, are you connected with Edron or... Uh... Let's see. Anyway, uh, if you still see uh, the same problems, please let me know. But are, are you correct, uh, connected with the ad ROM or with no. the... With the cable. Ah, okay, okay. I'm using that cable. You know which one I'm talking about, right? Ah, I'm yeah. sharing. I didn't know I was sharing. Of course, I couldn't know. <laughs> it's, it's, um, Okay, guys, let's move on. If we start having more issues, uh, uh, I can try to put on the uh, wireless. Just let me know online. If you if you lose me, don't hesitate in uh, interrupting. I can still use wireless. Uh, the thing is that I put cable to make it stable. Yeah. But now I'm afraid if I remove, because now it's connecting to the cable, I'm afraid if I remove the cable, I will yeah, destroy you something. Both, actually, no, 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 mm. you, you can do both, but yeah, it takes, uh, you can be connected with both interface. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah it takes, uh, you can be using both at the same time. That's my point. Yeah, you can <laughs> be using both, but if you connect on another side to switch, mm. yeah. yeah, but in some software, it might completely log out. And it's Windows, so it might just not work. It's not Windows. This is not Windows. Yeah. <laughs> Windows is, is there. That's Windows works. Works. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> One of the, the questions that uh, uh, so Mark asked uh, was, uh, ah, but don't uh, neutral currents change flavor? And so I, I point you towards this uh, uh, yellow uh, box here, where you have the neutral currents. Of course, this this is coupling to Z. So this is, but this is a current. But you oh, see, okay, okay. there is no flavor change here. Uh, as uh, uh, flavor changes, and of course here we also have diagonal in a mass basis and flavor basis are identical here. Uh, but here, the flavor changing is here, where you are changing up flavor to down flavor, you see? Yes. Or down flavor to up flavor. Here, you, you, you do have an interaction that changes flavor because it's a charge interaction. So you have, deep op deep, not opposite, but different charge um, uh, quarks uh, uh, here. The downs are minus one third, the ups are two thirds. And of course, this depends on whether the Ws are getting in and out, uh, but this uh, minus one third plus two thirds and so on, this sums up to, to cancel the, the, the mass, the mass, the, the charge in the vertex. Of course, the, the direction of the, the when, whether the particles are coming into the vertex or outwards, uh, it will 
affect what is the charge of the, the W bosom? Which one of these two is the, the current that you're talking about? Um, but even for leptons, it's the same. There you go. So no, no flavor mixing in uh, neutral currents. But we do have flavor mixing in the in the sorry here. So leptons are being converted, let's say, into neutrinos via uh, via exchange of a W boson. Um, and it's in the sense so that the role of the, of the Z boson just role in, in terms of it's a mediator of of weak interaction, let's say. So not the mediator. So it's uh, just like the photon. It's it's pretty much like the photon, but but uh, well, it distinguishes don't... left and yeah. right parts. Yeah. Apart See? from that, it's just, for example, the particles collide yeah. might interact with the Z boson. Yes. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So, but here you see you have the difference between the photon. So the photon couples in this way, in the same way to all. You don't have the the one minus gamma or one plus gamma here. So it, the, it, the photon does not select the the chirality. In other words, it's the same that saying that both the left and and this is obvious for all of you, I guess. Both the left-handed and the right-handed parts of the electron have the same charge. You form a direct spinner. And I heard something that the neutral currents are are very hard to detect or something. Yes, you heard okay. something. Uh, you heard it very well, and I will mention that right now. Just be, uh, before, let me say once again that well, they do exist. Right. They do exist. Yeah, they are. That's they are very well measured in the, even before the um, left times. I guess even before left times. And I'm now I'm lacking a little bit of history now uh, that I uh, I should remember. But yeah, but they are very well uh, very well known. The thing is, um, they see differently, and I will repeat this as many times as as needed. They see differently the left and right chirality. And that is conferred by this uh, projector. You have the Kyle projector here. No, the cable, the cable is uh, or perhaps you will try to switch while yeah yeah it is already working professor it's working guys can are we are you with me yeah okay now i removed the cable because it was getting unstable again um i'm using wireless i think there is there is another wireless here that uh, but but professor are you using the wireless uh, edrom or the lip uh, no, Edrom. I would like to use the link. No, Edrom is not uh, not stable. There, it's not. Uh, you, um, you have a, a hidden connection of leap. Uh, yeah, the, the problem was the cable because the cable is with a bad contact. But uh, the leap one, which one is it? Do you know? It's a, a hidden connection. Yes, I used that before. Uh, okay, I so don't, I don't recall how to. <laughs> well, we can just okay, on. let's skip this one. Someone arrives this here. Arrives. I will. Uh, I will ask for some help. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, so, but he, 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 please, guys, confirm me. Can you hear me normally at the moment? Yeah. 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 We can. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. So I was saying that here, the the for the Z, the Z boson sees the the left part with this coupling, and of the the, the same up part, it sees the right part. In a different way, so it distinguishes. So it's not like the the photon in the sense that it does not interact in the same way with the left and the right parts. It's the same to say that the left and the right parts of the electron, of the up quark, of the tau, and so on, have different weak charges. That's equivalent to say that. Uh, and what happens when you have uh, when you have a z? Um, uh, so when you have more Higgs doublets. There is a non-trivial flavor structure that is uh, induced that can start changing flavors in the uh, in the uh, in the in neutral currents. But then, as Mark was saying, are these neutral currents very hard, or not the neutral currents that are hard to to see, but the flavor-changing neutral currents that are very hard to see? Yes, indeed, they are rare processes. 
the ones that, uh, that are observed, uh, they are extremely rare. There are some where, where that uh, can eventually happen, or at least within experimental uh, limits. Um, and in the standard model, all candidates of flavor changing note occurrence are uh, induced radiatively, so at the loop order. So they have a, a huge suppression coming from the, the, the loops. But they change flavor. Yes, 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 yes. Not here, not here. This one is true level. It's uh, the, this ah, is not the one. Level. But neutral current, the neutral current can doesn't have to be only coupling to Z. It can be mediated by a, a new scalar, a Higgs, for example. But in the standard model, the Higgs boson of the standard model does not mediate those uh, FCMCs, at least, at least in the um, at the level. Right, so we were looking into this uh, Lagrangian with this uh, with this uh, Yukawa matrices, and uh, when we 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 expand, so we when you do the, the uh, apply the Higgs. Now recall that the phi uh, tilde already removing the Goldstones is given uh, in this way. Uh, you put we put everything together here, expand. And we can extract the undiagonalized mass uh, terms in this way. There you go. So here now I'm putting these and uh, the Ls and the Rs to the left and to the right just to be more concrete. So uh, we in fact don't need to 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 diagonalize the mass itself. It's enough to diagonalize the Yukawa matrix because the, then the mass is in the standard model. It's just up to multiplication by v. It will not be the same if you have more than one uh, Higgs doublet. Where you have uh, you would have uh, VA. Okay. Okay. Etevaldo, are you there? Etevaldo, I think. I think he, he's there. Yes. Yeah. Right. So here we have this the the, the gamma matrices. So these are the U color. The Yukawa matrices. Uh, if it gets unstable, we already now we have someone to <laughs> to ask for. So we have uh, we have the, the gamma matrices, uh, and also the, the complex conjugation part, the delta matrices, um, and of course this when you apply the, the v uh, over square root two, this these are the mass matrices. But let's focus on um, on just the the the. the Yukawa matrices, the gammas and the delta matrices. And these are written in the weak basis or flavor basis. This is, uh, when I say weak, I can also say uh, flavor basis. So let me just write here weak slash slash flavor. Now, we do as always, we rotate uh, gamma and delta to the mass basis using a bi-unitary uh, transformation because this, these are complex anti-symmetric matrices. Uh, so you have a left part and the right part that they, they rotate independently. So you, that's why you need this bi-unitary transformation, which doesn't happen for scalars where you have like symmetric matrices. And if it's real matrices, they are orthogonal, in fact. So it's enough to have one, uh, if the symmetric, uh, matrix is symmetric, it's enough to have one unitary or orthogonal in the completely real case uh, matrix to rotate from one basis to another. But here in the experiments, we have one mixing associated, you can think in this way, one mixing associated to the left-handed part and another mixing unitary is associated to the right-handed part. So, we can denote the new Yukawa matrices in the mass basis as D. D stands for diagonal, DD diagonal in the down sector, and DEU uh, uh, as diagonal in the up sector. And AB, as I said, are mass basis um, indices. And this is how you rotate. So you apply a left diagonalizing uh, matrix uh, on the left and the right with the, with the dagger. Um, on, to the right of the, 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 the U power matrix, um, of course, plus the complex conjugation, but it's enough to work with, uh, with one of the, the parts. 
Uh, of course, then the quark masses uh, come uh, in the form of, uh, and here I'm putting a bar because because I'm uh, I'm I have called here above. I think no, I didn't. So maybe I had done that before. Yeah, I think it's because just to this thing exactly. I, I, I it's here. So I'm calling just with a bar because there is the MD mass and the MU mass to not confuse with the uh, with the. Uh, so MD bar stands for the, the entire matrix, while uh, MD without a bar stands for the down, down quark uh, mass itself. So these are diagonal matrices. This is just uh, uh, to set the stage here. And these U matrices are unitary matrices. So this is important to know in the, the calculations uh, to follow. Right, so what, uh, what do we do now? So we rotate the down quark Yukawa matrices in this way. So let's let's just see that the indices are correct here. So you have originally so you have the down uh, and the uh, the down left and the down right with primes here. These primes are important because they 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 identify you the the weak basis. Now you um, apply. To these eigenvectors, the rotation. Uh, so the, to the DL prime, you apply the the, the rotation. Um, or let, let's let's uh, let's um, let's uh, do it in a different way. What we are doing here is inserting inside two identity matrices. So to keep the result unchanged. And now we identify. So we separate into parts, and we see what we get. So in the middle, we get. Uh, the diagonalized mass matrix, and this is now what we are trying to extract from this from this uh, uh, matrix uh, uh, equation here is the definition. This will give you the definition of the the, the quark fields in the mass basis, essentially. And there we go. So now I'm defining the down. Uh, so without prime is the, the, the rotation of the flavor basis to the mass basis and the, the down R without prime, the rotation from flavor to mass basis. Here, I will also denote them with green and red to help visualizing something uh, that I will uh, call to your attention. Also note that uh, this is diagonal by, by definition, so this A and B, uh, of course, uh, are the same. Right. Um, so, we can we can extract from this all uh, all uh, down quark field transformations. So the first that we we borrow from uh, uh, from from here, which is so you have this da, uh, which is equal to this transformation, and of course you you can just apply another matrix unitary matrix to the to the right, and with that obtaining so then you you become identity here. And you obtain the transformation on the, the, the prime. So this is just the standard matrix one. And you can conjugate. You can conjugate this one here. So here it's uh, uh, taking into account that the gamma, the, the, the bar defines uh, it's a emission conjugation times a, a gamma naught matrix. Uh, and from this conjugation, you can also extract uh, how does the, the unbar, uh, unbarred uh, D left quarks transform just upon conjugation of course also i'm doing something here i'm putting indices up and down so, for, so the, the down quark matrices with conjugation with the emission conjugation have the indices up the ones that uh, don't have the the dagger have indices down uh, so that it matches to to the so unbarred d quarks and u quarks will have the indices down um uh, and primed ones will have indices up and when you put the bar, you revert the order. And this is to be consistent. So to, to help having this Einstein uh, summation convention, uh, you should uh, define uh, what uh, is the mean of indices up and down. And this is consistent with the basis that was defined here above. So if if, if you didn't notice, uh, you'll notice now that I'm using a, a down, a lower indices here, upper indices here, and the opposite in the, in the flavor basis. So just to set uh, all the details here, right? But where where is this uh, 
taking us. Good conjugation, there you go. Yeah, of course. And similarly for the right-handed quarks, you can do the same story and uh, obtain uh, these uh, conditions. Now we have done a rotation in the uh, down sector, and we are now we are going to do the rotation in the up sector. And of course, as you may agree, these are two uh, independent rotations. So we come to the to the up sector uh, and do the same pro uh, process, process again. So this this is so insert two identities here. We have. Uh, a diagonalization matrix here, so you diagonalize this delta to the to the mass basis, and uh, and now you um, you identify the fields once again. So this is the, the mass basis uh, formula, and extract the U part field transformation. So this is just repeating the same, and uh, here it goes. So there is nothing new compared to what was done in the for the left ones. Of course, I was lazy in not writing the everything for the right. The right-handed quarks. Does anybody here know why I care much about the right-handed and on, on the left-handed ones? Does anybody has a an idea? Why uh, would you repeat the question? Sorry? Would you repeat the question? I can repeat the question, of course. Do you have an idea why I am not? Uh, so here I said I was waiting and I didn't write the all transformations of the right-handed quarks. And I think even here, if you see, you only see green. Uh, uh, green boxes, and only I wrote only one for for the right-handed quarks, and did not bother much. Uh, uh, you don't have to know. You don't have to know, but they have to the regression, regression mm -hmm. from the far right to yes, far yes, far. But the yes. But the thing is, I, I, I tell you, I or I can tell you, we are looking into, uh, we are going to look into the charged currents. If I didn't uh, say yet. Uh, we're talking about the flavor physics and standard model, so that's linked to the charged current immediately. So the CKM matrix that I said. Exactly, or, or uh, uh, up quarks and down quarks, uh, and interactions with Ws. And what did you learn about charged currents in, uh, in the, what do you learn, what do you see here? My question is, what do you see here? What do you see here in this blue box? Flavor changing. Yeah, yeah, sure. The flavor changing, exactly. But uh, oh, the flavor. yes, yes. Which is selecting what? The left. Exactly. And what's happening to the right ones here? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Because we don't have a W right boson. We only have a W. So the W bosons are, you can say it's a double left double, uh, boson. It's because of the SU2 left symmetry that this so we never bosons get, exist. Uh, we never get uh, reaction. Uh, yes. We never get diagrams with yes. right turning to down right. No, then. Never. In the standard model. Ah, so, so they just remain sterile. So yes. In terms of, uh, in terms yeah. of uh, charged currents, yes. Then why do they have to be sterile? Well, they do exist. You need that for Dirac masses. Uh, so they, they are, so they, they, in, you are, your fermions are Dirac. No, that's something that is. And they, they do exist. But those questions are, are important because this is uh, what makes you understand things here. But they decided to say that the double bosons are exclusively left chiral. The doubles don't have chiral. chiral but, they select but they select the chiral, yes. Okay. At least at this level. Let's say uh, at this level, at, at three level, then uh, and in the standard model. Okay, but that uh, IRR doesn't do that, right? Um, they can uh, have. Uh, there can be some uh, mediated, in effective interaction, okay. which okay. is not a fundamental interaction, but you can have like a, a fundamental one, which is a uh, normal charge current, and then something is happening on the other side. Uh, but with lots of stuff at, at, at the middle. Yeah. With things happening in the middle, yes. Yeah. Or with, when you remove or integrate out something, this is possible. Just to, like the example of the Higgs boson came into two protons, but actually that. Along the, the, philosophy, the philosophy, yes. The philosophy is okay. Along the philosophy, yes. Not the same, uh, the same process, but the same philosophy, yes. 
but yeah there can uh, can happen so, but let's not think in those terms here in this terms we are only thinking it's uh, the in fact the right part is sterile as you said in terms of charged currency does not have it's completely neutral it does it's like you can think you have neutral particles that don't interact with the uh, with electrons or with uh, with photons. The photon itself, <laughs> it's neutral. It doesn't interact with itself, and the neutrinos don't see the electromagnetic field. In the same way that the right-handed uh, chirality parts of fermions don't see uh, the W fields. You can think exactly. This is exactly in the same footing. Chiral is essentially kind of a charge. Yes, you yes, you can think of uh, yeah. it's a, yeah. you, you can think of, uh, of it as a, ch a conserved uh, quantity. Yes, you can uh, set up symmetries for it. The, not gauge, but this is not a gauge symmetry, of course. But there is this custodial symmetry and, uh, and uh, which are SU2s, global SU2s. And there is a, there is a big field called uh, chiral perturbation theory, which is typically called the KPT, which is uh, which, which is lattice QCD stuff. Uh, 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 that's that's a big field on its own that uh, I don't know much about, but it's all based on on chiral symmetry and chiral symmetry breaking, and why, so fermions, uh, sorry, uh, pions, the neutral pions, are scalars that uh, are pseudo Goldsons that uh, would be massless if chiral symmetry was exact. Uh, but with uh, with uh, without being exact, they have a, a small mass, but they do have mass. So they are pseudo goldstones, not exact goldstones. There are all these considerations around the chiral uh, uh, structure of nature, in fact, and with physical consequences. Um, but here, in, in the sense, since this is only selecting the right part, uh, sorry, the left-handed parts, I really don't care much about uh, the transformations of the right field because they will not be important for the discussion in the in the part sector. Unless, unless we had some SU2, some SU2 right symmetry, where you could have also the left, right on the doublet with a neutrino and an electron, something like that. If you have this, and if this is a gauge symmetry, then you will also have a new W boson. So you can call W right plus minus which would also have this electric charge plus minus, but uh, this, this ones, if they exist, they are a lot heavier, but there you would have new J's here. So you would have like J mu W right plus or minus equal to something one plus gamma five. But that would sort of complete the thunderbolt, make it more this yes the, the first and this is what we are also going to discuss today we mentioned something we mentioned something along uh, exactly along these lines uh precisely along these lines but the first th this is not the minimal extent so the minimal extent is only putting oops it's only putting this right on the neutrino and you solve the neutrino mass problem uh but if you want to to explain that in a more fundamental way then you, you start looking to symmetries and then the next to minimal way is putting actually it's already next to next to minimal way because the minimal way is just putting right in the neutrinos without any considerations not even a, a, a seesaw mechanism just right in the neutrino in the uk interaction for that but then that we are going to discuss that that neutrino is neutral and you can have like mass terms which are unprotected i will i will explain you that uh, after one of the breaks um and uh, that's the, the next to minimal. The seesaw is like the next to minimal, but it solves a few conceptual problems also. And then if you are not happy yet, uh, OK, then there is a, an SU2R. And depending on the mass scale that you want to give to the right and the neutrinos, it will set up the mass scale of these W bosons, eventually also some Z prime bosons. Uh, and, and that will tell you. Uh, if they are light enough, not light, not electronic light, but a few TV, maybe they can be searched for at the LHC, or if they are much heavier, if you say this, this right and neutron is like the gut scale, then these Ws are also gut scale, and <laughs> no, no way you, you can ever see this uh, these currents here. So let me just uh, 
erase this from here because this was only for the discussion. And let's just before our first break, because I think I feel that some of you are needing a, a coffee. <laughs> um, Let's just uh, go back here. Yeah, so this is why I've been focusing only on the left-handed uh, parts. So we'll forget for now about the right-handed ones. Yeah, and also recalling unprimed, oops, unprimed, this is flavor or weak basis, and this uh, without primes is uh, mass basis. So, uh, let us study again the interactions with uh, with gauge bosons. So, in the termination of the weak and the electromagnetic current, we assumed uh, before a flavor diagonal basis. Actually, let me just uh, maybe we, we make a break now because before introducing this, um, I think this is a good breaking point. We will have a coffee. Let's have a, a 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, right, because we, we are actually, I think we are going to end a lot earlier today. I'm seeing a, the pages are going too fast. <laughs> it took me a lot of time to prepare, but but now it's going very fast. So uh, I thought I underestimated again what I could talk about, I guess. So, guys, on mine, uh, I will put this on pause and we'll be here. Okay, pause. Say again, sorry. It's rare to see a physics book with so many numbers. So many numbers, so what's in just letters? Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, they have this, this, uh, this is the yeah, discussion yeah, yeah, yeah. of known results. That's yeah. a review, exactly. see? Yeah. So it's more a discussion. Yeah. There is nothing new that they are, all established things go to that book. Yeah. That's the, that's the point. Uh, imagine the size of that book in, a, well, in a, a thousand years, in fact, so we will uh, learn that a lot of the things that we are discussing today is like Aristotelian physics. Mm -hmm. But uh, but um, but imagine if the knowledge keep on growing. Of course, this book will also grow with knowledge. So perhaps you just find one of the equations. Yes, yeah. something. Book, it's just a step. <laughs> yes. It's just one equation over many things. Exactly. Okay, so let's uh, resume. Um, so we are going to study um, now interactions with gauge bosons because in the first half of this lecture today we were studying the interactions uh, with Higgs boson in fact. So it was the mass, but the interactions with the Higgs boson come in the same form as the mass. So they are proportional to the, to the, to the mass uh, or at least to, to the VEV. So the, not the, exactly the mass, but, uh, but uh, the VEV. Uh, they are, sorry, the Yukawa coupling. So that sets up the, the, the interaction strengths between leptons, uh, quarks, and the Higgs. And we have assumed, um, not already now, now we start assuming and not a flavor diagonal basis, but in the determination of the charged current, for example, uh, or all the other currents, we assumed um, a flavor diagonal basis, where primed and unprimed fields uh, were identical. But let's look into the more generic, uh, the generic uh, case. And this is stopped. Guys, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Because the image is not uh, moving. The image is stuck, right? Yeah, yes. No. Yes. Uh, for me, it's not, I don't think. Wait, what? Ah, <laughs> so it's, it's stuck here. Um, let me, no, so do you see, do you see the slides moving up and down? No. Of, of course not. It's not going to crash. Perhaps you should connect the iPad to the, the Wii network. Uh, the problem was not the iPad, it was, was this network. Yeah. No, I see. Uh, okay, guys, I will have to share the screen again. On the top, and maybe the other one, there's a stable one. This is this, uh, the network is very powerful, right? It's the maximum strength. So that's why I don't have the problem with the Windows stuff. I never had any television with it. Oh, no. well, I think there are other issues. Don't make me, don't make me upset. <laughs> I don't want to cry about it. <laughs> oh, Windows. Uh, 
Right, guys, can you now see ele electromagnetic currents on the screen? Yes. Okay, good. So, so let's revise um, what happens with electromagnetic currents. Here, of course, we have to take into account the left-handed and the right-handed parts. Um, so I've, been, I've done the minimal service about to get the transformations for the for the, the right parts as well that uh, are also going to be needed here. Uh, but uh, you know, so this is a vector current, which means that uh, the, once again, once again, look when I say when I talk about vector-like fermions, with not chirals, vector-like fermions, it's because the, the weak interaction will see them uh, in this way as vector currents. This is the perfect uh, the perfect way uh, how to 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 highlight what is a vector-like fermion. Because the interactions with the, the with the Ws and, and Zs, in principle with Zs. Don't you see before that that uh, element was formed mm -hmm. as a vector? Nowadays. Exactly, and oh. this transforms as a vector. And uh, for chiral fermions, you don't have that in a in in the weak currents. They don't transform as a vector. It's as a as a as a vector plus or minus axial vector plus axial. But with chiral with vector like fermions, no, it's. The, the, the weak uh, currents will also transform uh, in this way as vectors. So, but um, here now I'm distinguishing uh, the up and the down with the two different colors. So that because we are we know that the the the, the matrix that rotates the red um, are the same matrix. I say the, the, the same red with the same L or R index, of course, uh, label. So the ones that rotate these are the same. The ones that rotate these are the same, and this and this. So you can already see here that there will be identity matrix here. And when you rotate from the, the, the flavor basis, the electromagnetic currents, plug in here the rotation matrix. And of course, the definition of, in fact, the definition of this field in terms of, of the, 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 the mass basis ones, and then you see, so you have the indices contracting here, A with A, this I with I, this B with this B, of course. And you uh, arrive, you can easily, you can uh, flip this uh, U with gamma because they are two different spaces. Gamma uh, are from the Lorentz indices. So mu is a, is a four, uh, a four vector Lorentz index, but this also has uh, alpha, beta, spin or indices. Uh, which which are uh, act under the uh, are indices of the Lorentz group, um, and but this is uh, this has indices of the the let's say of family family space. I'm not calling an internal symmetry at this level because uh, uh, family at the moment is purely accidental. We have three families because just because. But of course you can, as we discussed before in BSM models, you can construct a theory that tries to explain this, where this is no longer an accident. And in fact, it has multiplets that only allow for three generations. That's a possibility. But you see, so uh, electromagnetic currents are diagonal. They uh, have the same uh, structure uh, in the, both in the flavor and the mass base. So what, can, what do I want to say with this? That the matrix that diagonalizes the masses of the, the down, down quarks is the same that diagonalizes the electromagnetic currents. So you can simultaneously diagonalize the mass of the quarks and the electromagnetic currents, right? So this is, I think this is clear from here. And similarly, you do uh, the same for all the other ones. So once again, uh, the, 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 uh, Mass um, electromagnetic currents and um, and the uh, Yukawa sector they can be simultaneously diagonalized because the matrix that takes from one basis to the other one cancels out here. You see, cancels out so becomes identity. So it works. Now, if you if you if you start off with a diagonal thing and if you apply the rotation to the mass basis, you don't destroy the diagonal character when you are in the physical way. So this is to say, electromagnetic currents that you measure, they are diagonal in the mass basis, which is quite convenient. Right, what about weak neutral currents? 
So, although there is a structure coming from the, the fact that it sees different left and right parts, uh, you can still see here, and by looking into the colors here, let's say, and the, and the labels, of course, that you have, again, the same matrix. So the matrix that will diagonalize this use um, will once again uh, cancel out. You can pass the matrix through this number here. Uh, there is no commutation uh, problems here. And it's the same for any of these four turns here. So you rotate to the mass basis uh, and you get exactly the same, uh, the same diagonal structure. So once again, neutral currents can also be simultaneously diagonalized with, uh, with mass. Or in other words, the transformation that diagonalizes the, from the flavor space to the mass basis is the same basis or the same rotation that diagonalizes uh, the, the, chart, the neutral currents. So this partial uh, conclusion is that neutral currents in general, so the electromagnetic currents are also neutral currents. Uh, we can see in that way. So the mediator is, uh, is a neutral field. So neutral currents in general are simultaneously diagonal, both in the flavor and mass basis. And this is the, the, the main conclusion that you should take from, uh, from here. And this is generic. This is generic because we are assuming a flavor non-diagonal basis. The primed basis, this primed basis is not diagonal in general. So it has a non-trivial structure. But of course, by definition of current, it's it is diagonal, even in the in the. This is also one of the definitions of of this uh, interactions of this uh, charge and neutral current. So, so basically, these gauge currents they are diagonal in the interaction basis. This is how we construct the Lagrangian. So this covariant derivative is is uh, the, uh, uh, so the d mu phi d or d mu psi d mu psi. It's diagonal in flavor by construction. You need the indices to contract accordingly there in, in, in family in this case. So, and then the question would be, yeah, does this di diagonal character remains if I have a non-trivial flavor structure? So far, so good. For all neutral currents, we don't destroy this diagonal character. But let's see what happens with charged currents. I think we would not be talking about this if there was nothing special about the charged currents. And here, is where fun happens. So, step by step, um, you have the charged current Lagrangian. So I just decided to write the true Lagrangian here just for concreteness, uh, with this G, not with the E, to be slightly lighter. And in terms of the left and the uh, on the left field, so we don't have right-handed fields uh, in charged currents. Um, and you see that uh, uh, there is something already taking place here. Because you have a U quark and a D quark, plus the complex conjugation here. Uh, so the matrix that, that, that rotates from the mass by, uh, from the flavor basis to the mass basis of Ds and of Us are not the same. So maybe this is already suggesting that in general, charged currents in the mass basis are not going to be diagonal. So let's check this. So first, rotate the primed fields to the unprimed mass basis. So let's rotate to a basis where we have fields diagonal in mass. And uh, we get this that you see here below. And you get the matrix that diagonalizes the left handed quarks and the matrix that diagonalizes the left, sorry, the left handed down quarks here in red and the left handed up quarks here in green. And this is not identity in general. Of course, it could be, like, as a spoiler, I, and the spoiler is in this green book here in the middle of the table. Uh, there is a, a chapter that I passed, which is the CKM mixing. And of course, nature, I'm already telling you, nature is not diagonal. But this, this is like the beginning of a big story of an area called uh, flavor physics. This is where flavor physics start playing uh, a role. So since uh, the matrices uh, that organize the uptype and downtype quarks are different, as I said, 
So this is no longer going to be this uh, delta Kronecker, delta AD. It's not no longer identity. And we can define a new matrix. So this, this can be, uh, so uh, we call it V, AB, such that your charged currents in the mass basis should have this VAB inserted uh, here. So look at the difference from this formula to the formula that we had above. Let me copy this. I will paste it next to the other one so that you, you, and then of course I will remove. So let's go back to the, to the ones in the beginning of today's, uh, it was here, exactly. I will paste it here. Of course, I have to reduce the size. I guess you can still see. Uh, let me see if I can put it. Okay, it has to be here. So you see, uh, of course, the current should be identified uh, somewhere here inside. So remove the W and uh, remove the G and you have the, the, the G over two and you have the same, uh, no, the, the G only and you have the current. So here it was, we assumed flavor diagonal, but this is clearly non-realistic. This is only a toy, toy example where we assume that everything is diagonal. Nature is fully diagonal, but nature is not diagonal. And we have this V now to change, to tell you that you not only have a flavor changing in terms of the type of quark, I mean, the, the, if it's up type, previously we already have flavor changing from up to down, that's already a flavor changing, but it was uh, conserving generation. So it was generation diagonal. There was no generation mixing in this case. Now with this V, A, V, so A and V are generation indices here so there is um there is a flavor uh mixing also uh intergenerational not intra but intergenerational so between different generations of uh, of quarks so we'll go down there again there we go and this VAV is uh, the cold, uh, so this uh, V matrix is the cold Kabibu Kobayashi Maskawa or CKM matrix. This is how we typically denote it. Of course, uh, there is a, a, quite a polemic debate. There was. So this in 2008 gave a Nobel Prize to Kobayashi and Maskawa. Uh, and there was a third one, it was um, uh, Nembu, I guess, that got also a Nobel Prize. For the discovery of uh, symmetry breaking and uh, um, and all of that, and Kobayashi and Maskawa was um, related to uh, to this uh, stuff about flavor physics. Now I I would have to go there and, and see exactly um, what the Nobel Committee wrote, but Cabibu, this was the guy that really discovered this first, only for two generations, not the full one, but he wanted to describe. Um, some behavior in, uh, uh, in, um, in meson physics. So why would some rare decay, some type of decay were being observed that would require violation of flavor between up, uh, sorry, between down and strange quarks. So uh, there, there, there was these this interactions that, uh, that uh, were not, uh, were lacking explanation, uh, this rare decays and the Kabibu ex uh, come up with exactly with the, what you have here but only for generation one and two. So only between uh, up, down, uh, charm and strange. Um, he really was the precursor of this, uh, of, of this. He got the Sakurai prize and a lot of other prizes because of this, but the Nobel prize is the one that really sticks for life. And he did get, and uh, also the Italian, um, Cabibu, you know, he was Italian, so um, Nic Nicola Cabibu, I guess that's his name, if I'm not wrong. And he, um, like uh, also the Italian press, and uh, the Cabibu itself, Cabibu said that he was, uh, to the press, he was really glad, he, glad that the field of his work was uh, recognized, but he, uh, there was some bitterness, and it was two years mm -hmm. before he died. He died in 2010, and the Nobel Prize was in 28, um, 2008. 
uh, and he said that, uh, uh, well, but I have some bitterness, if I, if I recall the words, I have some bitterness uh, feeling because uh, of not being recognized. Uh, and th this was a little bit strange, in fact. Why was he not recognized for this? Uh, Perhaps because he had already a Nobel Prize. He did have a Nobel Prize. He, did, he, he, he won other prizes. Oh, the, uh, as I said, the Sakurai Prize, for example. Oh, okay. So that's me. Yeah, that was quite. A, th there was a debate in Probably me. Probably political and, concerns. Or whatever. Could be, could be, could be. This is something that uh, you can. Um, it is. It's always the case, indeed. Anyway. Uh, the thing is, for his uh, memory, um, his name uh, is still uh, is still it's immortalized in the CKM matrix, and even more is the first. So it's not. There are some authors I've seen authors calling KM matrix only, which no. I find extremely mean. KM, uh, that's... Yes, <laughs> the KM uh, the KM matrix. In fact, Kobayashi and Maskawa they indeed. Uh, come up with the, with the final structure of it. But the idea, the concept, the concept so the was... guys who call KM matrix are Kobayashi and the, No, no, they, they, they worked with Kabibu. They were also not very, they were not comfortable with that. Uh, I, I, I think they were not comfortable with that, but of course they would not uh, stop accepting the Nobel Prize only because yeah. of that. But, But at least, uh, oh, no, no. I will replace the mark. I have another one here. But at least, what uh, what is uh, a reality is that uh, the the C is the first letter in the CKM matrix, and that is already a like a, a recognition of the importance. At least, this is the way I I see this. is is a recognition of the importance of Kabir to this uh, to this job. Right. So, what is the conclusion out of this? The conclusion is the Nobel the Nobel Committee is not always fair. <laughs> <laughs> and the physics conclusion, of course, is that charged currents cannot be simultaneously, and this is the point, simultaneously diagonal both in the mass and flavor basis. That's only possible in neutral currents, like the weak and the electromagnetic neutral currents, as we as I am insisting uh, a lot. I think you will be, at the end of this day, you'll be, I don't want to, heard, to hear the word current again, <laughs> because we are repeating this too many times. But, and diagonal and flavor and basis, so these words are, uh, are with us for today. So if you diagonalize uh, the, so this is just, again, a repetition of what I said, but if you diagonalize the charge current interactions, a repetition, but inverting the the, the, <laughs> the reference frame. So if you diagonalize the charge current interactions, the mass base is no longer diagonal, and vice versa. So this is uh, this is the same as they cannot be simultaneously diagonal in both bases. So you see, if and it's not if it's uh, provided that nature gave us a, a non-trivial flavor structure, then uh, if we choose to work in the in the in a basis that we understand physically, that is in the mass basis, where we have this identity of particles being kept uh, in the propagation, then we will have a non-trivial non effects in uh, in the in the in the mass basis in terms of flavor changing uh, charge currents. Does it have physical um, physical impact? Yes, it does. A physical impact. But before that, let's just comment on the fact that this CKM matrix is unitary. So this is just a simple calculation to show that, provided that the other matrices are unitary. It's unitary by construction. When you measure the, when you have the actual experimental values, there, there are some tiny deviations from unitarity. Of course, this is tiny. Uh, it, it's, it's an experimental, let's say either an experimental error or or that deviation from unitarity uh, could also uh, imply that there is some new physics uh, making that. If, if the actual CK matrix is not three by three, but it's imagined four by four, if you have a fourth, if you have vector like quarks, or so let's just imagine that you have 
not, I'm not going to put a fourth Caro family, but a fourth vector-like family. So the CKM matrix, instead of being a three by three matrix, would be, so this is the bits of BSM that, uh, <laughs> that I'm telling you, but this would be a block matrix, let's write this way, where you have, it would have VCKM here in this block. And then you would have something small here, something small there, and something like order one here. And this would be uh, approximately, maybe this is the actual, this is the actual unitary, uh, let's say exactly uh, unitary, unitary. If this is unitary, then this is the CK part is only approximately unitary. And do you know why, why, why this, I'm putting this epsilon with epsilon very small? So, in order for the CKM matrix to be approximately. Exactly. And this means also that the flavor changing interactions with a fourth vector like, or even Kyle, but let's call vector like family, uh, are suppressed. So we, we are not expected to see them happening. Uh, a lot. And in fact, we don't see that happening a lot, but there, there is space, there is experimental space for those things to be viable. And in fact, there, there, there is some indications that uh, that can be like this, this deviation from unitarity can be uh, a meaning of this. That we are only seeing this. But we also know this is almost unitary. So maybe I, that it's only experimental and, uh, uncertainty that does not allow us to put okay, exactly there. Can we go, go on for, go on ad infinitum? We can. <laughs> we can, but but uh, uh, we can if the nature has infinite amount of them. But if uh, if nature if nature has indeed only one more family and nothing else. Why not one other family? No. If, if you go to a point where it's exactly unitary, you have the experiment and you get to a, a sensitivity that you, you, you know with five sigma uncertainty that the matrix is, uh, is not five sigma uncertainty, five, five sigma certainty that uh, the matrix is unitary, so, such that deviations up to five sigma don't go away from unitarity. So deviations from unitarity are one in a million or something like that probability of being a statistical fluctuation, then you say, no, there, there is no space for more physics in the quark sector. But that's the human-based criteria to say that, well, all the things that exist because- well, it's a physics basically. It's physics. Really, unitarity is, is like oh, a, no, 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 a, no, a, a big principle. The five sigma criteria. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's nothing else beyond here, so this is a well, discovery. It's not so much there's nothing else, but it's like, then it's mm -hmm. the life, it doesn't, the, the odds of there being something else? Yeah, the five sigma is telling you the odds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the odds, but and very strict odds. Uh, yeah. Five and and actually at the moment the well, odds is well yeah, beyond five think, sigma. But to, to be fair, to Mark, I think it is necessary when we do something like Bayesian uh, statistics to obtain those uncertainties. It also depends on your priors a lot. It depends on yes. a bunch of assumptions that you make, and if the assumptions that you start with are off by a little, that can have few wrong results. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Precisely. But, but yeah, I mean, it, I think just the point is if you have, you know, as a physicist, you will die at some point as a physicist. <laughs> Other people, I don't know, but as a physicist, you <laughs> tend to die. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, we have limited time, so you, you can work on something that's that has a one in 10 million chances of even being mm -hmm. physically relevant, or you can work on something that has one in a hundred thousand. It's just a matter of exactly. time management. It's, um, of course, it's, uh, but but that's also, this is all statistical argument. Yeah, in that sense, because uh, well, our, this, is a, this is a mathematics that then gives and our, for all eternity. But exactly, but the thing well, is that we don't, we will never have exact uncertainty. Yeah. An infinite sigma, I mean, zero sigma certainty is uh, unrealistic. Or an infinite sigma, infinite yeah, sigma, yeah. it means that it's an infinite sigma uh, confidence level that uh, 
that you are there. So these this, this are two uh, impossible impossible limits. And then we just this is uh, there is this criterion that the discoveries when you have uh, that, uh, in fact there was no five sigma discovery up until now that could would not end up growing even more. Yeah. There were three sigma uncertainties, eventually some in the borderline of four sigma that went back to lower sigmas, and then it was only a statistical fluctuation indeed. There was one uh, one recently in um, an hypothetical discovery of a second Higgs boson of 750 GB in 2015 or 16, that both Atlas and CMS saw <laughs> they both had the same statistical fluctuation, which uh, was very weird. But then it went away with more data. <clears throat> and uh, but, but the main important thing is you imagine that we had in real life there was a 10 by 10 matrix. Would, yes. would we be able to detect its, its effects? Let's let's or put it. it will have any importance. <clears throat> The thing is, the first thing is that 10 by 10 matrix. Uh, so this one here, that is here, this uh, would be like a U, another approximately unitary 10 by 10 matrix here. And these epsilons are, are 10 by 3, 3 by 10. So one is a transpose or whatever. Um, and what happens is that we know that CKM is already almost unitary. So these epsilons here are really an experimental limitation. Yes, yes. But and wouldn't some of those particles like that could interfere in a in a detectable way? They can. They can interfere. You can have gauge interaction. This is, I say, this this is of course uh, associated to to the gauge uh, to gauge interactions. But those other particles can have other channels. They can couple with other things. With other, with other, uh, I see. Uh, <clears throat> typically, the gauge, uh, the gauge interactions are the ones that are most. Uh, but for example, with Zs, they can interact more subtly with Zs, or there can be other particles that are not fermions. But um, but you can, if you can detect some of these particles, you have to put them in the game already. Okay. And when you detect them, you can start filling out this matrix. The point of the ten by ten is that. If you have a 10 by 10, we know that this second block is also unitary. Okay. This is small. So some, some of these small entries will already be small because the CKM demands that. But some can be not small, can be extremely small. And those that are like our communication, the communication with the standard model, with what we can see, is via these epsilons. So if we have something that is completely coupled from a uh, from the, the, the fermions that we can uh, see, the, like the neutral current, the charge currents so that we could eventually see. With, with ordinary matter, so we wouldn't be able to... They would couple with ordinary matter via this... Uh, yes, 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 but it would be so small that you could never experiment with could. So. It could be very hard to detect. And also, these particles that will fill out this can be heavy in such a way that they, it's also very unlikely to produce them, at least with the current technology. Uh, of course, if you go up in energy, if, start, if you start seeing particles here, and if you start producing them sizably, of course, you can start having a, 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 an a independent treatment of this sector, because this sector here uh, does not touch the, the standard model fermions. So technically, in real life, we will we'll never know that these particles even existed. You could. You could. Because the thing, the point, uh, Mark, is the following. Try to follow me. No, I, I know if it's you, a limitation of, on, on the experimental apparatus. But if uh, unit, unitarity is restrictive, unitarity can can uh, rule out the possibility of more of those particles. If you if you go to a certain point where the matrix that you fill out is already uh, unitary to a high precision level, uh, you have no more space to fill it out with more uh, more particles. Even with a, a thirty by thirty matrix. 100 by 100, 1,000, or a million by a million. If uh, you have precision, of course, you need precision for that. Okay, of course. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have precision, uh, yeah. then it can be anything. But, but, uh, but these are quite precise measurements. That's, yes, but, that's but the point. But the interaction of those particles with the standard model would be so weak that for all relevant purposes, it wouldn't matter. It, it does matter in the sense that, uh, look, they, they, they may mean, be weak with the standard model, but the, among themselves, it can be large. And okay. if you start seeing them, they will 
they will communicate with but each they, other. But they will interact with our world. They, they do because they have the gauge bosons. The W, they, could be, okay. they have the W boson uh, to interact between themselves. And this place is equal to interact so gravitationally. Wimps could be something like this, right? Uh, no, uh, not in CKM. But they, they can in the in the neutrino sector. But the philosophy will be the same. Say again? The philosophy. Yes, the philosophy is the same. The, the sterile neutrino is, is one thing that is with a, an epsilon that is almost zero. It's something like this. Uh, um, exactly, the philosophy is that. But here, we are talking about quarks. So these guys here also have interaction with the strong force and with gluons, which would, uh, you could have like a, some, if you call this vector like quarks like D or something, you could have things like D, uh, D, D bar. So this is eight, three times three bar is eight plus one. So you can have an octet here, yeah, exactly. You can have a gluon field here. So you can have these things like you have the gluon field here and you have here the D, this vector like quarks, D bar D. This sort of thing, um, and this could uh, happen uh, quite sizably. Actually, the sensitivity of the LHC allows to probe this up to like three TV or something like that already, um, because the, the, you have production. This vertex here is huge. It's the biggest, the biggest vertex uh, that we know of, the largest. Of course, then the the the, the, the probability of producing these particles is also proportional or inversely proportional to its mass. So the, as the mass grows, the particle decays faster and the probability of producing it also decays. Um, and it, the, it fall, and not only that, because all of uh, that is even squared because the, the, the cross section is a squared of an amplitude. We will talk a little bit about this in the next, the next lecture will be more on the calculation side of these things. This, is, this, this part is more understanding the model and the concept. But you have other channels to see this. In the case of neutrinos, sterile neutrinos, it's a different story because they don't couple to a weak force. They don't couple to strong force, of course. And the only way you have to probe them is via this extension of a CKM-like, which is a PMNS, but an extension of a CKM-like uh, mixing. And and because of that, um, because of that, uh, uh, if they are sterile enough, if this epsilon is way too small for for them to decay to lighter neutrinos then they, they they can be dark matter they can be long lived and they are heavier but they don't decay because of epsilon suppression and, and so on but the bottom line is unitarity is typically typically it's it's a criterion for what you can have about in physics and what processes are allowed you cannot violate unitarity that's a a, a basic Principle. Otherwise, all this rotation between different bases would not make sense. If you violate unitarity, then all that we are doing uh, doesn't make sense because this only makes sense if these matrices are unitary. Right. <clears throat> so, a generic charged current interaction is of this sort, uh, as uh, I have already shown, and you can write this in. Uh, in a matrix form in this way. And now, uh, this is for Osvaldo, not only, of course. We were talking about the generations. We were talking about why quarks are so different sizes and so on. And why do we have these huge hierarchies in the, in the elements of the mixing? This is also, this is part of the flavor problem. Why, so this is almost, look, unitary in the sense that so the, the squares, the squares are proportional to the well. I did it by eye, but the squares are uh, proportional to the to the sizes here. So this is almost one one one, yeah. almost uh, diagonal, but not exactly diagonal. But it's almost 0 0.97, 0 0.97, 0 0.99, yeah, very small. and the other ones are are a lot smaller. Uh, I think you can see there is a, a small square here yeah. and, and a small one there. Um, and uh, take into account that uh, the probability of these things happen is even squaring these numbers. You see how unlikely something that couples first and third generation is to exist. But what couples the same generation is very uh, well, likely. Only the first block of the matrix, first two by two matrix, is almost 
Unitary yes, and it's this is the Kavivo part. This is the, the Kavivo mixing is this, and there's the angle here is this. We have one in the left element, yes, and it's very small. From this. Exactly. So you yeah. see, so the Kavivo angle, so this is the sign. So I can also already from here, uh, I can tell you that uh, that the sign, so this is the Kavivo sector. So sign. The Kabibu is 0 0.226, I guess. I guess the uh, well, it can be there is the minus. Uh, this, this is again like cosine, uh, sine minus sine cosine, or cosine minus sine, something like that. Or even starting with sine. Actually, let me see if I have here something open with the Kabibu mixing so that I can be more precise. Um, No, this is only CKM. Uh, no, I don't think I have straight out of the box. Uh, uh, no, no, I, I don't have it here. I don't have it here. Uh, but uh, you understand the concept. The, the point is uh, to understand what's what's going on here. And you have the, the, the Kabib angle. This is indeed known as the Kabib angle, theta C, is uh, related to this. Uh, this block here. So this is a Kabibu part of the CKM matrix. And of course here, and these are PDG numbers, so again, this little book ones, and this is the magnitude of them, because there are phases. This, this is a complex matrix. They, uh, they are phases, you can parameterize this with angles, with all, like Euler parameterization and also a phase, which is where CP violation takes place. But I'm not going to talk about CP uh, more than what, more than this. Um, but you see, uh, this is part of the flavor puzzle. We don't understand why we have these hierarchies also uh, in the in the CKM matrix. And the, when I, we come to the neutrino mixing matrix, it's going to be even more puzzling. So, as I said, besides large mass hierarchies, there are also large hierarchies of certain quark mixing angles. And we don't know why. So besides an attempt to explain why uh, why do we see larger hierarchies uh, in masses? Flavor physics also aims at explaining the mixing patterns. Well, I think this sentence would be more precise. Uh, flavor physics uh, is the physics that uh, studies this. Uh, but in flavor physics, uh, there, the a theoretical side of flavor physics is trying to explain this. So addressing the flavor problem. Now let's see, for example, uh, of course, uh, then we can replicate these two. Um, this is another way of, of showing the matrix, the, the CKM matrix. Um, these are all vertices. You can have these interactions with Ws, and the squares are there. So note the, the little ones here. And then, of course, you can conjugate, uh, you can change the arrows here. Uh, you can change the, the minus here. There are more combinations of this, provided that uh, you conserve the charge here. You can put uh, bars in one and bars in the other one if, if you define the, the time in different ways. And so th this, uh, the, the, what you label as plus, minus, uh, bar or in bar depends on uh, how you define your time flow here also. Uh, but these are just the, like the, the ones consistent with the, with the charge current Lagrangian that I wrote above, at least then you have less complex conjugation and other things. But you see, so here, this is just to, to to visualize it. these vertices are proportional to the to the mixing element, so it's no longer as in the in the the, the, like the previous lecture where we just set up everything diagonal. So D would only go to U, S would only go to C, and D would only go to T or T to B, depending on the direction. But every only this would be non-zero, and the, the square the, the the squares the green squares would be one uh, if uh, uh, there was uh, the flavor basis was diagonal. And if you could simultaneously diagonalize the flavor and the mass basis, only this would be allowed. But we start measuring all these other ones. We measured this. So we know that the flavor basis is not diagonal. It cannot. If we diagonalize the flavor basis, then in that case, it's not diagonal. Yes. Does that? That's the gauge, but that's the original Lagrangian in a way. Yeah, no, I just, I'm having trouble. 
conceptualizing what it means having on that on that system. Yeah, exactly. You don't have a definite propagator. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. You, you don't have a particle changes and without interacting with anything, it changes its identity. That would be a, 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 a mass uh, known diagonal basis. Uh, a flavor basis. A flavor basis. If you diagonalize a flavor basis, then the particles start changing identity without interacting with anything. So it's like magic happening <laughs> on the way. That's easy to, that, that's it. That's difficult to visualize. Yeah. But in, in principle, you can frame physics like that. Yes, in principle you can, but then uh, imagine the, the conceptual issues of trying yeah. to make experiments to measure that or to, that, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, in, to, in principle, it's, yeah, it's, it's a valid way of looking at it. It's a valid uh, way, eventually, of looking at it, but, but it's highly non-intuitive. Yeah. No, well, I, I'm not even sure if, if it's physically valid, it's valid in, term, in, in terms of calculation, it doesn't make any difference. Physically, well, I think we can ask here the experimentalists that may be more familiar with this, uh, with this, with these thoughts. If there is any way of experimentally or of experimentally making this viable in any way, well, certainly it will be highly, but even theoretically. Let, let's put it this way, even theoretically, the way we define the propagator, quantum filter at the most basic level requires a mass diagonal basis. So the propagator, it's uh, proportional to one over the mass, plus some momentum and other things and the pole and so on. So the mass is there. If you have non diagonal mass, so the propagator is no longer well defined. So you cannot, when you have an interaction with an exchange of a particle, that's no longer well defined. So the uh, particle can change uh, identity in that propagation, and uh, and then uh, you have something else completely differently happening at the end, and you you don't see those things. So it's really interesting to see if, this, if, if you could develop a theory, uh, a type of field theory, who would be <laughs> flavor basis? Yeah. Maybe maybe it's yeah. not possible. Maybe there's like some some mathematical. You would have to define a lot of you things from scratch. Yeah. But the mass, the mass is the, it's clearly the identity of the partner. And if you define a propagation, you need to define propagation somehow. And yeah. then that would be like a, a combination of many things that would, uh, in principle, they, at the end, you will find out that uh, mass violating interactions would kind of be highly suppressed or forbidden, so, but with a, a huge train of, uh, of turns. Yeah. Um, it's maybe it would be something like that, but the definition of the propagator, as it as it is given in quantum field theory, would be would be would have to be completely different. That definition, in fact, sets up our uh, our basis as the mass one. But you, uh, but then the flavor the flavor becomes non-diagonal, and you have these effects. And how can you detect these effects? For example, this is one of the possibilities. So this charge currents led to some observed phenomena. For example, cation decay into new, into muon and neutrino. Can you see all? I don't want to show everything that I have below, so that we focus uh, in one by one. So here you see, uh, this is uh, this process is, is measured, and this was one of the first ones being measured. If I'm not wrong, um, so a K, a K plus meson is made out of so it's a the thing so because of the strong force these things are glued together that's why gluons are called gluons <laughs> in a in a condensate or in a composite state which is made out of an s bar and a quark and there is a certain probability which is not that small so this is like 0 0.23 approximately and then you have the double boson exchanging and double boson uh, uh, goes so decays into this is a virtual one but decays into mu one and a neutrino and you can observe this account just uh, decaying into new one and neutrino. This is what you see. But now, if you if you go to this one, see this kappa naught, kappa zero to mu plus mu minus. Now I'm here. I'm writing the diagrams. First, these two. Uh, these are the dominant ones. 
so now it's rare because you have a loop suppression here. So this might think a lot rarer than, than the, the, the other one. This is in the category of the rare decays that you can find here in PDG. It's re even written, rare decays. <laughs> there. You can, uh, you can see that with your, with your own eyes right now. There. If you go to the town, uh, even here, let me. I think they, 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 they call it rare case the place I've seen that. No, no, no. It's drug consistent papers. Anyway. You will find the word rare decay somewhere there if you uh, in, here, the in the booklet. Yeah, control F in real life. Yeah, in the booklet, I'm not immediately finding the, the word rare decays, but uh, oh, but this is the way they are they are known. I don't need modes. K plus decay. So I'm in the K plus hydronic, photonic. Okay, the rarity is in fact given by the the the, the their branching fraction. And so on. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they also have extra dimension. There. Anyway, so this is this is a rare decay because of because of uh, loop suppression, and of course you have two um, more or less same size contributions. Here there is a mass difference because of the up and the charm here, uh, but you have like the the, the cabible mixing taking place here completely, like the two. So the green one is almost one. So this is a, a sizable coupling because it's, it involves the same generation. In this case, down and up here, and the M4K uh, strange and um, and charm. And then the uh, the red one involves like first and second generation. So it's the cabible mixing like U and, uh, and S, uh, S and C. But it's equivalent. But then there is a third possibility here which is uh, one that involves a, a top in, the, in, the, in this internal propagator. And this is extremely suppressed contribution. So it really does not count. Well, it counts for decimals of this calculation, but you have like the two tiniest uh, couplings on, in the CKA matrix. So typically, if you want to calculate this, I would start by calculating this because of the up mass here. I'm not sure if the mass of the hub comes in numerator or the denominator here, but it's uh, internal. It, it exists both in the numerator and denominator. Uh, but this is like a, a, this channel. Well, now I'm not sure, but um, if it comes in the denominator, I, this I would start um, first with the, with this, which would be slightly larger. But I'm not sure what, about what I'm saying now. Um, so take this with a grain of salt. But clearly, these two, these two are the, the, the ones that are uh, dominating ones that should be calculated. And this one you can neglect to the to a first approximation. Another one that now it's not rare; it's extremely rare decay. So this BS to mu mu, and this is a quite good test of new physics. So you can have these two type of diagrams. One as the ones above is the box diagram and the another one is the penguin i think this this above one can also have penguin diagram there the other ones as well mm -hmm. penguin because oh, it looks like a penguin it wow. does so it's like um, let me okay. I, I will try to show here to you and also to you guys there penguin di diagram there's the end exactly so there you go here it's the penguin diagram so at least for you guys here and then i, I try to show so this is like the, that's the the diagram. So the, the penguin is lying down here, and for the ones that are online, right, I will have to show here. Uh -huh. People just to share. Uh, not because I'm sharing here, but I can share. I can share here as well. There you go, it's the same uh, picture. 
Are you guys online? Uh, and I can show to all, all of you actually here. So do you online see, see the screen? Yes. So this is a, a penguin diagram, basically. So of course, there are many possibilities of penguin, penguin diagrams uh, uh, involving different, uh, uh, different, um, different physics in its vertices. But this is, this is the type of diagram that, uh, that I drew there. So here it's uh, John Held is also <laughs> drawing a penguin diagram on the, on the blackboard. Um, so back here. This is a standard model penguin diagram for this process. But this is extremely rare because the leading contributions are proportional to this, uh, the second smallest you call element plus a loop. And this, uh, and uh, for some reason, but it, it's here, it sometimes happens. Um, uh, Okay, it's here. Um, so if you also have new physics contributing to these uh, diagrams, uh, it's, uh, it can be quite uh, important. It can make uh, a size and you can put, with these diagrams, you can put restrictions of new physics. For example, if instead of W here, if you have some charged particle that can couple to S and tau, some, some new Higgs boson, for example, I'm just considering it. So this typically, this decay typically is considered in, in models like supersymmetric extensions of the standard model, etc. It's considered as a, as a constraint on a, on a, on new physics. Another thing, and now and now let's, uh, I will introduce you one of the possibilities of um, one of the one of the hints for new physics these days, which is about this uh, R kappa and R kappa star. These are all flavor physics. Um, uh, processes. So these are kappa and are kappa, uh, kappa star processes. What, what are these? As you can see, the R kappa is the ratio between the decay of a B meson into a cowan, a positive B meson into a cowan, and then into a pair of neutrinos over the same processes, the same process decaying into a pair of electrons. And the R kappa star is the decay of the neutral B naught meson to an excited state of the kappa meson. I guess this is the meaning of the star here, plus a new plus new minus over the electrons. So in the standard model, let me show the diagram. So you have this. This is a diagram for each each of them. Just focus on the R kappa, for example, for now on the on the one that is on the left, on this one. So what do you think about uh, what is the prediction of the standard model for this? For the for the decay between a muon over the rate of the decay for this br means branching ratio so it's like the it's associated to it will be uh, uh, the branching ratio will be larger if there is an interaction that pre uh, pre uh, preferred a certain channel but here in the standard model so the leptons muons electrons and tau are involved in this in this part here so what what would you tell me about the standard model prediction of this? It is one. Exactly, it's one. Precisely because this part is is invariant. Let's say it's the same for invariant in the sense of uh, there is nothing changing there. The only difference between that we are taking is like this L. We have, one is identifying with the muons, the other one is with the electrons. But then here we have a, a neutral current. Either electromagnetic or uh, or, um, or 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 new, weak neutral current, right? And what have we discussed? What have we realized about this? That this is flavor diagonal to start with, and that the the coupling is only the gauge coupling. There is no. Let's look to this uh, again to this uh, current. Let's go up and look to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the Z one, exactly. Uh, but let's look to the left one ones. Z, right. So we are talking about, for example, this, this one here. Um, and this is, uh, there is one, uh, so the Lagrangian, 
in the Lagrangian is, is like this, will be only proportional to one, uh, sorry, here, one coupling, which will set the strength. And then there is no distinguishing between generations here at all. It's the same thing for all three generations, if you, if you look to the expression. Um, of course, there is this chirality part and so on, but the, the, it goes to the same. You have the left part and you have the right part on the other side, but that is the same for all generations. Thus, there is no distinguish, distinction in the standard model between different generations that is left. Therefore, as uh, Fernando, for Fernando said it was one, right? I guess it was Fernando. Or at Eval. Yes. Fernando, right? <laughs> um, so uh, Fernando said it's one, and it's indeed one because of this uh, same reason. So the standard model does not see any uh, difference uh, in the decay to electrons or in the decay to muons. So it predicts the same probability or the same number of events in one channel and in another channel. It's like exactly flipping the coin. Of course, there's also the tau channel. So this, if this would be uh, the entirety of the B meson decay, it would be one third for each channel. But one third over one third is one. So this branching ratio is like a, the, 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 it's a, the fraction, the partial fraction of a certain decay. So if B meson would only decay into cap cowans and, and the three standard model electrons, it would be one third, one third, one third. And one third over one third is one. So that's the standard model prediction. But what do we observe? Okay, this is what we just said. LHCB experiment at CERN is measuring our kappa equal to 0 0.864 and our kappa star is equal to 0 0.685. 3.1 sigma and 2.4 sigma away respectively from the, um, from the prediction. Um, of course, these sigmas take into account the uncertainty. This is only the central value. There is also an uncertainty, and the certainty is larger in the R kappa star. I think because it's an excited state and maybe harder to, to see. You need some considerations in the momentum that you are putting and so on. And the R kappa is uh, more stable in that sense. So it's uh, the, 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 the error bars are smaller. So the uncertainty is only 3.1 uh, sigmas. Right, so maybe it's 3.1, when you reach 3.1 sigma, you can start talking about, very cautiously, but you can start talking about an evidence for something, but very cautiously. It can, and it often goes back. <laughs> oh, it really often, but this has been increasing consistently since 2015 or 16. So every two years or so when the LHCB uh, experiment uh, uh, brings a new result, you see, actually it approaches a little bit uh, the standard model value, but it reduces a lot uncertainty. So the, the tension to the standard model, the, the sigmas are growing. Well, let's see what's going to happen soon. I'm, I'm putting a lot of hopes um, that nature will be kind to us and having physics next to us, not next to the Planck scale. And that this R kappa anomaly is if there is also the RD that I'm not discussing here, as well as the G minus two that we discussed a little bit in the previous um, in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, I'm hoping that we will uh, have some new physics, but if we don't, that's life. <laughs> what we want is the truth. Well, so the physics could be in things as as they stand now could be the th There is a problem so with that. There is, a, there is a problem with that because as the things stand down, you don't explain things that are clearly observed. One of them is neutrino masses. Another one is dark matter. And then you have conceptual problems like the, the flavor the flavor problem that we are trying to discuss, the hierarchies. That, that's conceptual, mm -hmm. but it's a way to ad hoc. Either you think this, this was God playing dice. <laughs> And this, this is, you have this meeting, it's unitary. I, I want it to be unitary, but now I will make a random generator in its entries. And uh, and then that was the result. And, and that's it, either you think that it's everything perfectly like uh, 
there is no fundamental principle behind these things, but you have already observed a lot of fundamental principles working, like the gauge principle, the prediction of three colors, um, and so on. I, uh, the prediction of uh, W and Z bosons with masses and charged currents, uh, all of this uh, has been so be so well and so neatly embedded in this first principle that why the family the flavor is also not something from uh, i think this should be under understood it's it's hard but it should be understood and once we have a complete understanding there are a lot of activity in this in this uh, direction but once we have a, a complete understanding it will be a groundbreaking step towards a better understanding of uh, even other connections even can be connected to gravity there are proposals that flavor has to do or either with extra, di extra dimensions or connecting to gravity in some ways and to select a few things and other don't. This is, of course, uh, extreme and exploratory proposals, but you see a lot of things out there. So, if this persists, this can be a hint of new physics. Here I'm putting as a hex. So, the same decay could be produced by some heavy particle at three level, not loop here. At three level, typically x um, x typically is um, is a leptoquark. For example, the leptoquark is a scalar particle that couples to quarks and leptons. So you could have a certain type of leptoquarks with a, with an appropriately appropriately chosen. In a, in a scalar charge. Exactly, exactly. A leptoquark, for example. Now I'm not going to be working out the, the, the hypercharges charges and the electric charges here, but a leptoquark, uh, well, the electric charge, it's not difficult, but the electroquark, um, if you call it, uh, let's call it um, LQ. So uh, LQ. So the quantum numbers of this LQ, so this would transform something like, do I can do now? Something like in color, it would have to be, the triplet, it would have to be in principle either, it can be either a singlet of uh, SU2 and then some, uh, let's say, some, um, some, some hypercharge. That's why I'm putting here X. I'm not going to work out the hypercharge now, but it can also be, uh, it can also be the triplet. Doublet. It can also be. It's always a triplet here, or anti-triplet, and can also be a triplet of H two. Uh, this would be a vector, a vector left apart. Uh, this one of possibilities. So there are different possibilities for what can this be, and uh, this is already at the in the physical basis. If you want to build a model to predict a particle that does this, you need to think in terms of uh, the original symmetries and then uh, knowing whether you can have a singlet or invariance of these uh, products of uh, SU3s and SU2s to build a Lagrangian and see if you have, if you can generate both these vertices. But assuming that the particle, the mediator is uh, dead or... The yes, mediator, yes. Wouldn't that uh, mm -hmm. discrepancy between the values could be due to loops, photon loops, let's say. No, that's because let's say, the discrepancy, this is a ratio. So photon loops and so okay. that will, that will, canceled. that will uh, be canceled okay. completely. So, but I mean, this has to be something that really couples differently to different generations. So we are talking a way of coupling to electrons and another way of coupling to new ones. But that's the mandatory part. And that in the gauge, sector you in the standard model gauge sector you, you don't have that either you have gauge bosons that are coming from the, the family sector if family is a fundamental a fundamental uh, thing then you can have gauge bosons that see different families in different ways like z prime bosons um, some double prime bosons uh, those are typically called also the vector left of quarks that you can have and here you would have like a wave it should be a, a boson. Maybe it, it has to be in a loop, uh, but that can help. That can be one of the possibilities. Or you have these scalar leptoquarks 
and, and and the interactions here are you cover like interactions so like interactions of the higgs with the uh, with the uh, with quarks and that doesn't have to be flavor diagonal as you as already in the higgs sector so if you have a flavor non diagonal uh, structure which means that you will couple differently to different uh, generations in the same way that the higgs couples differently to different generations so the philosophy uh, is uh, is the same just that the higgs cannot couple here uh, because it's uh, uh, it uh, is a neutral particle, and you need a charged particle here. So, we have discussed a lot about uh, about quarks. The question now is, what about lepton?s What happens in uh, in lepton?s now? So, this is what we have uh, seen so far for lepton?s This is uh, repeating the process all to, uh, all again. We can uh, diagonalize it. So I think I'm not saying anything new here. So diagonalize the Yukawa part, uh, and you get again the same uh, the same structure. So we have a diagonal uh, mass matrix, diagonal lepton here. So um, so this is you have you have uh, um, a way of writing your L in terms of the prime fields, the, the, so the flavor basis to the mass basis. So in the lepton, yeah, because now we are saying, okay, let's also go away from diagonality or flavor diagonal basis in the lepton. Because the question was asked for quarks, we should also ask the, the same question for lepton. But we have something. Neutrinos are massless in the standard model. The standard model predicts them to be massless. So this is one of the questions why one of the reasons why we should, even at the flavor level, we need to go beyond the standard model because there is remarkable evidence that the standard model is incomplete in that sense. So, uh, and the thing also, the lepton and neutrino field transformations um, relevant. Okay, the lepton, the lepton transformations are this. So, for the charge interaction that uh, Jean, you can see. So, right, this is familiar. This is the same as we have done it before. Flavor basis here mass basis here and this is the matrix that changes from one basis to the, to the other one so here the mass is diagonal here the mass is non-diagonal here the flavor let's see what it is here the flavor is non-diagonal so what about neutrinos so neutrinos are r between these quotation marks massless uh, and their flavor eigenstates um, are um, their mass and flavor eigenstates are identical. Uh, but in fact, we attribute the flavor of a neutrino to its lepton counterpart. So we say the lepton neutrino yeah. is the one that couples to the to the to the electron in this way. So we do this identification. So there is kind of uh, uh, like a, a parallel in the standard model. Of a parallelism between these two sectors. And also, because the mass I can say is a zero matrix, is, is diagonal by construction is uh, zero, any matrix will diagonalize it. So we have the freedom, any matrix will diagonalize a zero matrix. <laughs> so we have the freedom to, um, we can rotate the neutrino fields with, with the same unitary matrix as we rotate the, the lepton's. We don't have any restriction against this. Um, so therefore, with this, doing this, uh, doing this uh, rotation, uh, replacing the, in the charge interactions uh, and so on. So we have the same rotation here. This is identity, and in the standard model, the CKM light matrix is simply delta. So charge currents in the standard model are also predicted to be absolutely diagonal. So there is no flavor mixing in the in the lepton sector as a uh, prediction of the standard model. So uh, the conclusion about this, the standard model predicts diagonal charge currents in the lepton sector, which means that we can simultaneously diagonalize both the mass and flavor basis. But then there is this big however, that we know that the lepton sector um, are non-diagonal, and we also know that neutrinos have a mass. This is the, the, the big point. So neutrinos have a mass. So we don't we cannot have this 
this uh, simultaneous diagnosis on both sides. And in fact, in fact, we see also the same CKM effect in the in the neutro, in the weapon sector. We start with the oscillation of neutrinos and also uh, charged currents. So, if we ask, are these are these uh, things correlated? Like uh, that, the lepton uh, charged currents are non-diagonal, and that neutrinos have mass. Yeah, of course. The short answer is yes. That we have a relation between these these two things. So, we need to add neutrino masses, and this is already beyond standard model. A little bit beyond standard model. I think this is the obvious beyond standard model. Part that I will stick to this uh, beyond standard model part, the neutrino masses, but looking from the perspective of flavor physics. So let's extend the standard model with three generations of right handed neutrinos. There are reasons to make it uh, uh, three generations because uh, we we have, um, okay, we could, we could make less one generation three generations of reactive theory so if that's that's an organizing principle that's why that's why i put three generations but if you say that there is another symmetry some flavor symmetry here that can be gauged symmetry that would be even if it's an su2l if you have an su2 right sorry symmetry something like that where this uh, this would be so if, if you have an hypothetical like SU2, right, we could have also another U1, but let's forget about the extra U1s. Uh, we could have something like, uh, so this, this one would be singlets here. This one would be doublets. This one would be doublet there. This would be singlet. This would be doublet. And this would be part of a doublet. There, exactly. In fact, this, uh, ER and UR, this would be like a, an algus, would be like an RI field. Like we call here L, we could call these two R. Like um, so, so doublet in the sense that these two would be in the same, not separated. Uh, but when you start doing this, putting a, a gauge symmetry, there is something that you, all with quantum field theory, we could talk about is gauge anomalies. Um, and uh, gauge anomalies is something that, uh, let me just put, then I will erase this. A gauge anomaly is, for example, you have um, something like that. And then you have a Fermi triangle, like this. So let's start with them. If you have photons here, or let's put actually SU2, SU2R, SU2R, SU2R. Then when you calculate this, is proportional to the trace of, um, I, I suppose it's like tau R A, uh, tau B, tau C, something like that. Uh, now I'm not pretty sure, exactly sure about the, st the, the structure of it, plus some coefficients. But the point is here, so here you have all fermions that couple to this SU2R, including the right handed neutrinos. And if you don't have three generations, you will generate a non-zero. So this has to be equal to zero, but this is only equal to zero if you have three generations. Eventually more like six and so on. You, you have a certain freedom, but two generations or one generation, if this is a gauge symmetry, you will have an anomaly. And if you have an anomaly, look at what can happen. You can have an SU2R gauge boson. Then you have, so you have this, right? But now let's close it again. And what is this? Imagine this is like a, a WR boson, something like that. If you have this, um, what's happening is that you are generating a mass without breaking the symmetry or without breaking the symmetry a la Higgs. Uh, you are breaking with quantum effects. So at quantum level, you are not respecting the symmetry. This is horrible. This is terrible. This is like your quantum field theory failing. So, uh, 
Or if this is the one that's like. Exactly. But but by default, the WR is the masses, but then if we sum yes. all these, it seems to get an effective. Exactly. Mass. So at three level, it's forbidden the mass, but it does have, have a mass, which is the same as saying that the gauge symmetry doesn't exist. So we are putting a gauge symmetry, but then it doesn't exist. If you have anomalies, it doesn't exist. If it's a global symmetry, it's not a problem. It's typically, it's benign. If it's a uh, global, because you don't have, uh, it can have other effects, uh, other other effects like global anomalies, but they are not problematic at all. Yeah. Uh, but, and in that sense, uh, driving by the principle, uh, and knowing that with three generations, you are free of these anomalies, that's why I tend, it's a, it's a, it's a deeper reason, not only because uh, we have three generations in general, but also because we, we have, um, we, we have this reason to make this, uh, uh, to make this, uh, to require this anomalies to cancel. This is typically when I have papers uh, proposing new models and things on uh, grand unified series and uh, sorts like that. The, the uh, typically the referees they allow to pass a lot of things but if they discover an anomaly somewhere and sometimes there are things that we overlook or we have more symmetries and there is something that can generate anomalies but they are extremely picky with anomalies they are really really and, and they they are right in being picky because they having an anomalous a gauge anomalous model is is like a, a it's cheating because you are putting, ah, it's very nice. I have a gauge symmetry, gauge principle here. I can explain a lot of things. But then you have anomalies. Oh, look, if you have an anomaly, the gauge symmetry doesn't exist. So we are putting a vector boson with a mass almost by hand, in a way. So that's why we like to 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 have this new R, uh, this new R, replicated in three generations as well. So, but these are standard model singlets, um, and this is another another important thing. So, they don't have symmetry protection against large uh, mass uh, parameters. So, do you understand what is this symmetry protection? Right. So, if uh, remember that I could not make a mass term for, uh, and I, I will use this here above. I could not write this electron mass term something like here L E R. Do you remember this? This is forbidden because this is in SU2. This is a doublet. This is a singlet. So this is not invariant. And also U1, the U1. So the hypercharges were not matching. So it was one half or minus one half. And here it was uh, minus one, I guess. So it does not sum up. So this is, this is what I mean by symmetry protection. This is symmetry protection. Symmetry protection. Protective. It doesn't have symmetry protection against a large mass parameter. Yeah, a large, I mean, small one. Uh, yeah, uh, against a mass parameter. Well, okay. You could say it has a, an approximate protection protection for mass. Not like that. Okay. It pertains to the No, uh, here there is a, okay. If you you can you can uh, come up with lepton number, and then lepton number would also protect us. Uh, and let's see why. You have an example of being absolutely minimalistic, which is saying, okay, I won't have a Yukawa interaction and not this. Um, but then this Yukawa to replicate the neutrino masses would have to be stupidly small, I think 10 to the minus 12. So you are trying to solve, to address something about the flavor problem like the, the mixing up in the weapons sector, but you are creating another question. So why an even larger hierarchy? If you had this term, and look, this is gauge invariant. So this is a low term. Typically, what, what is, what is uh, um, the rules to build a Lagrangian is write all possible gauge invariant terms. And this is one of the possible gauge invariant terms. Of course, it violates less than number. There is this C here because this is uh, this is needed for for um, so that this is not zero. So this uh, um, uh, so the up and so the zero the end the chiral fermions uh, contracting properly 
but if uh, if you have if you if you if you say there is a lepton number here this would have the same lepton number it should be like uh, i guess uh, minus one minus one this would uh, this violates lepton number so if you take lepton number as a fundamental symmetry this is forbidden by lepton number but then you would need you could add another a scalar typically that's called a majoron because it generates a major and a mass term like this uh, a, a scalar some phi which is not the higgs that could carry two units of lepton numbers and it would generate the same effect but i'm not going to that uh, detail here here i'm i'm just preferring gauge symmetry against uh, global symmetry so i'm saying lepton number is not a fundamental symmetry it's an accidental symmetry so i'm happy in uh, in not uh, respecting it as long as gauge interactions are all all gauge invariant terms are written and this is why from my concept this is the minimal way of writing a, a so, wait um, my understanding is correct that the reason we have conservation of lepton numbers just because of the um, the impossibility of the mass term because no 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 it's not the thing is the mass term uh, this uh, there should be a bar here there should be a bar here so the mass term the mass term the lepton number of uh, the mass term respects lepton number because the bar so the conjugated or, or bars have a minus unit of lepton number the, the non unbarred one bar so when you have a bar and a c you you it's minus and then it goes back to plus of course uh, this is I don't I didn't define charge conjugation maybe next year I will in the first uh, it's something with the Dirac and Majorana Fermin and so on but it, I don't have time now to, to do that but this is think of this as a conjugation here it's uncharged so it's just a conjugation of the of this field uh, but the, uh, the thing is any term in the Lagrangian in the standard model when you write the generic standard model Lagrangian you realize that all interactions respect this have this accidental symmetry you have gauge interactions and then you look you count and you can uh, you can see well i have to go above but you can uh, you always have like fermion and anti-fermion like that and the 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 left of the the left of number and baryon number as well they are respected so it's an accidental symmetry in the in the in the standard model this is a left on number violating interaction let's say and this uh, here I already wrote, uh, so it's not large, but any mass, any mass parameter. But this is an unknown mass scale. It can be huge. It can be closer to the electric scale. And also note that in general, we don't have to add on its generations. We can have n generators, provided that you don't have anomalies, if you have an extra gauge symmetry. So now the game is the same, but because of this term, of this extra term, we may have to reorganize these terms uh, in a way. So we have the mass terms here, um, and we can define these vectors. This is just to make the notation more compact. We can define these these vectors that you see here, uh, such that Lagrangian can be reorganized in this in this way. So you can write. Now I'm writing with the, with the big indices A and B, because this stands from one to six. Because if I want to reorganize, look here, I have two right-handed ones um, contrasting with each other, and here it's left and right. So the mass matrix has to be such that it covers the all uh, the, all these indices, not only one to three. It has to cover one to six, uh, and that, and the mass matrix would look like this. If you expand this, I need to put this one out because of double counting, because of the plus emission conjugate. And then you have you need to conjugate things here. And with this definition, I'm already conjugating a few things here in the in C in the, the left part and so on. If you expand, you need to you will have a double counting and you prevent that with this one half there. So, but the point here is not uh, the details about this double counting and this expansion is, is a different story. What is important is to look into this mass matrix, which is written in a block diagonal form here. So there is this. Uh, uh, these are all three by three blocks that we have here in the in the case that we gave. And this zero here is a is an important thing. Um, 
And also, this is a complex symmetric matrix when you do this. Um, and it can be rotated uh, only by one unitary matrix. So it's no longer uh, a biunitary rotation. So if you do a block diagonalization, so this is just the matrix, yes. And now let's let's uh, take the following approach. Let's say that this MR is much bigger than V. And being much bigger than V can be one PV already. It doesn't have to be gut scale or Planck scale. It's it's another scale above the, the electroid. It can be one order of magnitude above. That's already enough to, to say this is much bigger. Um, and when you uh, this is easy to do when you have a, a actually a two by two one. So you calculate the, the the eigenvalues of this and, and it comes automatically. Uh, but uh, in a matrix form, this is, uh, you get approximately because you have a square root, so something plus or minus the square root. Uh, and you, in a matrix form, when you approximate for this, you have two uh, block diagonal uh, eigenvalues, let's say. One that is suppressed by this scale, as well as this Yukawa couplings, and another one that is given by the scale. And this is the seesaw effect. You have something that is heavy sitting on one side and going down the other one, going up to this, in this way, going up to small <laughs> values, which is this one. This is the, the, the seesaw effect. Like if you, if you do a, a seesaw here, let me see if I can. You have a seesaw here. Here you have MR, and here you have Y nu V. This is, this is the, what is called the seesaw effect. And this generates something that is much bigger than the other one. And the mixing is also small here between the heavy and the light ones. So two possibilities. Let's say that uh, we only have these neutrinos are of a very high energy scale, 10 to the 16 GeV. And the Yukawa couplings are order one. This what I was discussing yesterday. Uh, Tuesday. Yeah, this is the natural. For me, this is the natural that the uh, Yukawa couplings are of order unity. So if I then then I would say I would have new heavy neutrinos at the, at the, the, this large scale, which would get this uh, mass here. So this one's there, and the other ones just putting numbers here. And if I did miscalculate, this is this would be like about ten to the minus three electron volts, which is maybe too light, or but it's about it. The, the, the size, we are only talking about scales, not the actual mass differences. We are not going to discuss that. But this can also work, and this would be a high scale seesaw mechanism of the type one. This is a type one seesaw. And we, you can also make it work. You can say, okay, but I want now this new physics scale to be very close to us, one TV. I want to access it in the future. L this For neutrinos, this is already impossible to see at the LHC because they. They would be, they, they don't interact by uh, this neutrino, neither weak nor the strong forces. So they are pretty sterile, this right hand neutrino. So one TV is impossible to reach there, but maybe possible indirectly or in future, uh, in future um, collider experiments. But the Yukawa couplings a little bit smaller, 10 to the minus six, but 10 to the minus six is not sm much smaller, or it's more or less the size of the smaller ones that we have in the standard model. They are 10 to the minus four for electron. It's already 10 to the minus six, I guess, or 10 to the minus five. So it's it's reasonable. You are not going suddenly to 10 to the minus 12. That would be more okay, a, a little bit harder to conceptually understand. And this also gives like a, a new physics neutron that is uh, next door to us to eventually see something in the future, and the uh, active neutrinos would be. Uh, sub electron volt. This is like the the restriction. They have to be sub electron volt mass. So these are two types of um, seesaw that can explain the smallness of neutrino masses. And of course, uh, so uh, let's say that without MR, one would have to rely on on this size, making the flavor problem even more puzzling. But we can do again the same job in the in the in the charged currents, uh, for the charged currents, but 
to do that, we need to diagonalize again the, the, the mass matrix. Now I'm writing big indices that run from one to six. So it covers all those indices. And the point that I want to make here is that, so we have this, uh, once again, these blocks should be uh, dominant and this, well, that's not necessarily the case, but uh, it will help, of course. But the thing is that uh, if we take this block here to be, uh, sorry, these blocks here to be much smaller than this, which is in fact realistic, and then you just uh, compute these uh, things, you realize that the active neutrinos that we see, they are a superposition of the flavor states, as we know from oscillation. This is what we actually have in oscillation, is a superposition of this neutrino. But we can also have a superposition, including this sterile, this right hand, this sterile neutrinos. So we could say left handed neutrinos are the dominant component of active light neutrinos with a residual contamination from the right handed counterparts. So this, this is how you, you can see this. Now, if you plug this into the, 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 the charged currents, recall that we are on, we only have three families of left handed left charged leptons. So we this will not see the, that part. So there is a set a projection in the coupling to the right and to the left and the neutrinos, given by weak interactions that we'll only see this part. So the weak interactions don't see these these components. So they couple. You have this coupling to left and the uh, leptons to, to sorry to charge leptons, but it only you only contain this. Uh, we only uh, see this part. And so you can do this again. So you only need to take care about this matrix, this part of the full neutrino mass matrix. Only this will enter in the charged currents here, as you see. So you have a new VAB, a new, a new CKM like matrix, but in fact, this is the PMNS matrix, the Pontkovo, Maki, Nakagawa, Sakata matrix. And um, this is analogous for the CKM, but so th this is how it looks like. And uh, uh, again, this is the same the same uh, the yeah. same question as before. So here we exploited the road. So we have we need the neutrinos need something to be here, and we need the things to be small. We know that uh, this has to be small. There are cosmo even cosmological constraints on this. So how sterile is a sterile neutrino and so on. And this, the sterility of the neutrino is given by the size of these blocks here. If these blocks were big, the sterile neutrinos would not be sterile, it would be an active neutrino. And we would have seen four neutrino generations, let's say. But if, if, if being sterile, uh, this must be uh, as small as possible, if not zero. And the measurements have been given this. So this is what you've seen for CKM. But now we look for the lepton sector and the measurements, I didn't write the numbers here actually, but the measurements show a much more demographic matrix. There is one, uh, this is the, the so-called theta 1-3 element, the way it's going to be discovered. Uh, but the sizes are very similar, all like the order zero point something. It's, it's very weird. It's completely different than the CKM there are huge hierarchies in the CK meet. It's thing. symmetric. Right? It's not that More symmetric. Not. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It is. There is this tri by maximal structure. Yes, yes, it is. It is in that sense. It is. I was think, uh, thinking other, in other uh, uh, in terms of other symmetries. But no, yeah, exactly. This is kind of uh, this is what is called a tri by maximal um, structure. But what is not uh, really un understood is that uh, why do we have this, this structure in the PMNS? Why we don't have the same structure here? So the if we have a principle, if we can at some point explain, and this is in those models that I've been telling you that try to explain uh, the, the why we have three generations, we also attempt to explain the CKM matrix. Uh, but all those models want to uh, map to have like a mirror between these two. So the way you explain CKM is the way you explain PMNS and you would have the same features in both. But you don't have in reality. 
And this is one of the biggest things of the flavor problem. Why, why the middle row? So it's not a, it's not a generate, of course, but it's a, yeah, no, but, but why? why yes, why? Why? The why? That's a Nobel Prize question, of course. <laughs> It's um, nobody knows why. Why this is what it is. This was the way it has been being measured. I think that's super K. Um, I'm not wrong. It's not pattern. Right? No. The, yeah. There's a. Yes, there, there is that. You can. Uh, this is the biggest element, of course. But uh, this is indeed like. Uh, um, it's uh, it's interesting. It's uh, the question: Why do we have this? Uh, um, and how can you model? How can you explain? This is a challenge. How can you explain? Uh, predict the first principle if you want to explain flavor from first principle. You can. One way is putting a lepton symmetry and a quark symmetry, like uh, some flavor symmetry in the lepton, another one in the quark sector. So that's what people is doing. But more fundamental, at more fundamental level, everything coming from the same first principle, it's very hard to make so these things happen. Uh, Looking of the small stuff, so this would be like I'm trying to, to picture the interaction that's happening there at the the, um, at the, the anti diagonal. Uh, the so, uh, which one? Which one? Um, this one? Yeah, the weird one, and it's symmetric. So, this is position. this would be so you have here this would be something like this. Let's draw again. So, the W. And you would have um, so new one here, bar, and here and he, he to be tau. And I'm talking in a mass basis neutrinos, right? So this would be something like that. But then you know this neutrinos oscillate. So yeah. but then the other one is the, the, the symmetric position to it. The other corner yes. across from it. But tau, Which tau one? Uh, if you, from you too. This one here. Yeah. Yeah, this is with the electron and with this new three. Yeah. So it's um, it's not the same interaction by any means. Uh, yeah. No. One is involving a tau, another one is involving a, an electron. But in the quark is the same. Well, in the quark sector is the same story. But, but yeah. I suppose you can. It's not that. It doesn't seem to be that accurate to treat this. Relationship between uh, the leptons and and their respective neutrinos as equivalent to the relationship between quarks of the same dimension. No, it's uh, it is because the the neutrinos. These couplings are so. The, no, I mean, one thing is the size and the couplings, but neutrinos neutrinos are of type leptons, so you have of type quarks. And the and the charged leptons are down type. Uh, charged leptons are down type leptons. Neutrinos are up type leptons. In the same way that you have the mixing uh, flavor chain in between up type quarks and down type quarks, that also have different electric charges. Yeah. One third minus two thirds. Here it happens that one is zero and another one is uh, one or minus one. But it's exactly the same thing. The 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 the, mecha the, mecha the mechanism yeah. is the same. The, the reason for the couplings, that's the, the, the question. And this is, the hierarchies in the lepton sector are, are more democratic here. In fact, you agree with that. Not completely, but more. Uh, but not, okay, yeah. And also this, this mixing matrix, I said, this is responsible for the oscillation of neutrinos. This is the superposition that I have mentioned. But this, and this is to finish. Yeah, this is the last slide. Uh, large hierarchies among, uh, we have large hierarchies among fermion masses. Why do we have large hierarchies? We have tiny neutrino masses. Why, why neutrinos are so, so tiny? CKM and PMNS have different structures. So all this together uh, is part uh, or are the biggest questions of the flavor puzzle or the flavor problem. And this is the beginning of a new, of new, of a big field of research, these observations. In flavor physics. And yes, that's it. That's it for today. It's seriously disturbing. Yes, it is. It is. And 
I will put thing. I will stop recording. So for you online, you have any question, anything you want to say? Yeah. I will uh, stop professor? Recording. Yes, yes. Uh, I only have uh, some things I wanted to discuss to you about the exam. I don't know if you can talk or if. Okay. Uh, I'm a bit tired now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, you all, it's about what? The exam. Yeah, yeah, but about which question or? Uh, a thing on the first one and a thing on the third one. Okay, so let me, I will just stop recording now. You guys, you, you can, uh, you can go. Um, just a moment, give me a 